Hello, and welcome to Technocracy Zero Sum here on Dork Tales. Oh, I'm excited. That opening is amazing. Mm. I love it so much. So good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how are you all doing today, tonight? Uh, this Sunday has disappeared on me. Ready to be technocrats. Okay. I'm Ready to be What's technocrats? the weekend? I don't my My weekend blurred in like, it was a blur. Your weekend was travel time, which means it wasn't real, but it was really yeah. exhausting. Yeah. I did a lot of sitting around and yet I feel exhausted. <laughs> Yeah, you you hurt That's... some weight. Yes. Yeah. I totally military get that. strategy. <laughs> Ooh, well, here we are. Game one of Technocracy Zero Sum. I'm so happy that this day is here because I have been uh, freaking out all week. Uh, <laughs> freaking out, but also very excited. And um, very happy to finally get to share this plot with you that I have been squeeing to other people about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, to get us started, let's do some introductions. I'm Jen, I'm your storyteller, you can find me here on Dork Tales, and um, that's pretty much it at this point. But, um, yeah, let's uh, go around. I don't even know what order we're in on the screen. Oh, we're with Kelly. Kelly's next, apparently. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly. I'm normally in the driver's seat over there, but today I'm just a passenger on this uh, amazing adventure through... Uh, I don't know where we ended up last episode, uh, or in the pilot. I mean, I kind of do, but I really don't. So I'm excited for that. Um, I am, uh, I'm an Aquarius, I use he and him. And I'm very excited to be here, because I actually get to play some mage. Uh, today I am playing Nolan Westcroft, Dr. Nolan Westcroft, uh, who is a, uh, a former member of the New World Order, who now works for the Descartes Institute of Mental Health inside of the Void Engineers. And uh, I forget what his star sign is, but it's probably a Virgo. <laughs> well, that is great. I I love Nolan, and uh, he's going to be a good time. And I decided I that he had longer hair, so he has longer hair now. Cool. That's yeah, that works. And Christine. Hello, I'm Christine. I use she/her pronouns, and today I am playing the progenitor, Sophia Smith. Uh, who is a pharmacopoeist in damage control, i.e. a monster hunter, essentially. Or the one you call in to fix shit. That's gone wrong. Now, quick poll of the rest of the players and Jen. We were contemplating voices last time, and I was kind of running through the idea that I could just, to differentiate the voice into one that I could do, I could go down a little southern, just a little bit. Um have a bit of a different voice, not much of one, and not quite win, but similar. I like How it. How do you guys feel about that? That works for me. I mean, yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Like, do it. All right. We're going to go with that, and I'm going to try and fall into it over the course of the intro and opening. All right. Excellent. And moving down to Amy. Oh, hello, that's me. Hi, I am Amy. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them, and I am playing, who am I playing? I'm playing Heather Anderson. Heather Anderson, yes. The Void Engineer Earth Frontier Division tech slash mechanic slash I, it's broken, I fix it, as long as it's not biological or hopefully not requiring computer programming because I can, but like maybe you could just do it analog instead that would be better and you know what there let's make them a gemini that seems like a good idea there are two of them this is getting out of hand. Oh, no. there's two of them <gasps> hmm. i'm just gonna check your uh your merits over here now <laughs> and last but certainly not least robin Hi, I'm Robin. I use she, her as my pronouns. And tonight I am playing Tegan Warner, uh, a biomechanic for Iteration X, who is um, definitely like one of the Hitmark's biggest fans in, in the fact that she wants to become one, probably eventually, because she thinks that cyber tech is the best and to be the very best like no one ever was. She's got to catch all those metal limbs, all, um, including her cybernetic eye that she has. But, uh, yeah. Um, 
and I'm super excited. I changed up her look a little bit. Um, kind of went for more of a a badass like biker jacket, you know, for her. But she still got that lovely purple hair and the my multicolored eyes. But these bangs are <laughs> really long, so they generally hide the one eye apparently. Um, but super excited playing Jen. I, I just want to say that Robin, your eyeliner is sharp enough to stab someone. Yeah. Have you considered stabbing someone? <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure she has. I'm yeah, pretty sure she's true. considered that. Everyone looks fantastic, by the way. Um, great, great costumes that have been built on from the Extra Life uh, pilot. So just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, as mentioned in episode zero, if you haven't watched the Extra Life pilot, that's okay. Um, you don't have to. Uh, we're kind of going to be dipping into some of that storyline here tonight. Um, however, uh, if you have seen it and we deviate from it, just go with it. It's cool. It's all canon. Um, the network made us change some things. Right. Yeah, exactly. We just, we just had to make a few adjustments. You know. <laughs> Um, but I think that's everything. Am I missing anything, Kelly? Um, no, I think that's it. I think it's it's all on cool. you. Just tell me when to face the music. Cool. Then uh, y'all ready to play some mage? Yeah. Yeah. Tech -tech -tech -tech. I've, I've got my my cheating dice ready. <laughs> also, oh, good. You're first going to meme them. has been okay. made. Oh dear. I'll have to check out memes later. I have too many things happening, but I appreciate the memes. You know I do. Okay. Um, feel free to put that music on, Kelly. Everything is quiet now, and it's getting hard to breathe. It was a really beautiful sight, you know, the way all the colors of the rainbow tore through the ship like 10,000 knives and the screams of the crew mingled with the howl of the sudden winds in an ethereal harmony of voices, both familiar and not. As the wind carves through and around each of you, time stretches into eternity, and you remember how you got here. Every moment of your life plays through a series of silent film vignettes where the soundtrack is separated into a thousand needle points that you feel vibrating in your bones, even you, Tegan. Moments you wouldn't be able to consciously recall, your subconscious recorded in absolute clarity. The feeling of being frozen, Tegan, watching the doctors work on your mangled body, blood dripping off your limp fingers to splatter all, all over the previously sterilized floor in the operating room. The taste of iron and salt mingling with bile in your mouth. You watch as movement in the room slows and then stops. The monotonous tone of your non-existent heartbeat becomes the only sound that fills your ears. The friend you, Heather, made in middle school, and the looks he gave you when he thought you weren't looking, that you preferred to ignore because you were afraid of losing the only real friendship you had. You kept the flower he gave you, dried out in the middle of a book you haven't read in years, but you know it's there, and that's somehow comforting. Your 93-year-old grandmother, Sophia, telling you to take care of yourself with a sad but caring look in her eyes as she makes you take more food at one of the few holiday dinners you were able to be at. Your parents look at each other with love and worry etched on their faces. And uh, as your phone rings, once again pulling you away and back into your other life, your real life. And Mick's laugh the moment before she hung up the phone, accidentally cutting off your hurried, I love you. You stare at her contact photo, the one where she's smiling in the sunshine at your old house without realizing that it was the last time you'd ever be able to say that to her. I'd like everyone to roll their enlightenment plus permanent paradox if you have any, please. Tens explode, six, six is a success, and just put that number in our private chat. Son of a bitch. Just checking one subtract, right? Yeah, I was one just going to ask that. Yep. yep and just remind why. me, which one's the enlightenment number? You're Eretic. 
I right. Right. Yeah. I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> All right, and sorry, was this just successes or? Uh, yeah, oh. just put the successes in the in the chat. And what was the difficulty? Six. Six. Excellent. Okay, great. You remember this floating sensation? after the explosion went off at the underwater base. And as these scenes of your life kind of flash through your mind, we're going to look at Heather for a minute. One of the things you remember the most really is your time with the Void Engineers. Specifically, your initiation and your kind of orientation into the Void Engineers. Um, they had some. They had some classes that uh, that you got to attend and and just to kind of teach you the way of things in in the VEs. Um, and on your first day, this. This kid, he couldn't have been more than 15 or 16. Um, he just kind of bounces up to you. He's got short black hair, kind of this Hispanic look to him. Um, holds out his hand and goes, Hey, I'm Mateo, and I'm a weirdo. Most, I can usually tell how people are going to react to me if I start that way, so. <laughs> how are you? Mm. Good, 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 good. You're new here too. Y yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. You know, I'm just. Why are you talking to me? Just saying hello. I mean, that's nice. I, I, hello, hello. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um. He um, kind of forces his way into trying being to being your friend. Just general hanging out and and being super friendly. And uh, give me a perception and alertness. Perception and alertness. Oh, I'm actually have dots in both of those. That's great. What's my difficulty? Um, let's go difficulty six. Okay. That is three successes. Fantastic. Um, there are three things that you notice about Mateo. Um, one is that you are not getting, you know, the weird vibe you sometimes get off of, uh, young men trying to be your friend. Um, there's there's none of that. Awesome. Uh, That's so rare. Se Pardon me. That's so rare. <laughs> right. It's it's very rare. The second thing um, you notice is uh, when Mateo gets excited, um, his voice cracks a little. But he's also like fifteen, sixteen, so kind of kind of expected. Um, but uh, the third thing you notice is that. Mateo is a little bit of a know-it-all. <laughs> and so when the the instructor is asking questions, um, like, uh, you know, talking about the structure of, of the Void Engineers and, and uh, what, what ranks are and stuff like that, his hand is up immediately. Um, if you make eye contact with the teacher, she's the type to call on you, even if you don't know the answer. <laughs> so, God, does Heather don't look at like, the teacher? Yeah. Okay. That's Just off kind to of the side, 
that kind of like fo either focused looking like writing notes or like yeah. focusing on the projector, but not looking at the teacher. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, you managed to avoid those questions um, after the, the first one or two. Um, and the first one or two are like really easy. So, you, you know, you're fine. Um, after a couple of days of this orientation, you get a, um, you get to meet your mentor, uh, the person who's going to be kind of inducting you into your area of the Void Engineers. And that's Sabian, um, I believe Sabian Knight is her name. Uh, I can't remember her last name and I didn't write that down, but um, she looks at you a little bit suspicious when you come in, kind of does the up and down, like, what are you doing in here in my space? Um, and then she just says, all right, newbie, show me what you know. And just kind of like points at a mechanics dream of a room where you could basically do whatever you wanted. Yeah. A <laughs> little bit of drool sparkling eyes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, just give me like a quick, I don't know, wits and uh, technology or something mechanics, like whatever you feel okay. like. I and have technology uh, with a specialization in modification, or and then I mm -hmm. have crafts, specialization in gadgets. So, but they're the same number number of dots so cool yeah um let's go with technology uh you can use your specialization if you want to just work to your strengths yeah sure uh difficulty of five because you basically got everything you could possibly need here <laughs> seven successes Oof. Um, yeah, she, she actually, hold on. Uh, how did I just roll four threes on four dice? Welcome to the <laughs> storyteller's seat. Right? Um, she is not able to uh, hide her surprise and how impressed she is by you. Um, it, she does kind of shut it down after a moment, but it's very obviously painted across her face. of <laughs> Just like, oh, the kid knows some stuff. Um, Definitely the expect the expectant look of like, look what I made. Isn't it so cool? Yeah. And it also makes coffee. And she's like, that, for really, that's really cool. Coffee, you say? <laughs> and um, it, you and her have this good working relationship um in the time that that you're there she's the one who uh got you kind of onto this mission because she thought that um it would prove to be some good experience and she also figured that worst case scenario she'd be able to kind of keep you safe so um but her biggest piece of advice to you was to stay curious um, because you'll only ever get stuck if you forget to stay curious now your time on the submarine that week that you got to spend kind of in cramped quarters with you know these schmucks and <laughs> the entire rest of the void engineer crew um and early in the week, you had asked um, Tegan about access to the internet. And so she managed to, to help you with that and help other people with that, which is fantastic. And is there anything else that, because um, I know I asked this at the time, but now you have a better understanding of your character. Is there anything else you would like to do during your time on the submarine? I think, honestly, she just like, aside from like the duties that she's required to do is like tinkering on her own little special projects and then like 
watching if once you get the internet like reading more uh like um getting her like her kindle e-reader updates for after like when she finishes another book and be like crap i need more um and then maybe watching soap operas i think that's Fair it enough yeah um you uh also for um some reason you're not sure why because this is several years later but um mateo has actually uh, been assigned to this mission as well and um kind of well you two had kind of drifted apart since orientation because it was like a couple of years ago and you both had your own jobs and stuff um he's kind of right back you know hi hey friendo like <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna be your friend anytime there's spare time so mateo is totally down to like watch soap operas if if you want to kind of thing yes absolutely it's brilliant cool um and I'm going to give you one more thing that you notice now without making you roll again, because um, you've known Mateo for a couple of years now. Um, you notice that um, that he's wearing a binder. And, uh, but he doesn't bring it up at all and nothing like that. So, um, so I just want you to make me like three of your technology roles, um, your specialty does not apply, uh, just to see, you know, how your general day-to-day -day work is doing, going. Okay, that's wits technology? Um, or intelligence in this case? Intelligence in this case, because it's not, like, off the cuff. Yeah, so intelligence and tech, let's go. Uh, difficulty, sorry? Uh, difficulty of four, because I know you have mechanical aptitude as well. Oh, I do. Yes, that's correct. And you said oh, you want three of these rolls? Yes. So might as well give me the successes as you get them. Okay, so that's two successes because ones are assholes. They are assholes. Yep. <laughs> Seven successes. Ooh. And then the last one is uh, three successes. Excellent. Um, while you're trying to uh, make some repairs to this little out of the way piece of the submarine that you knew existed, you didn't really know what it did until it stopped working and um it was just it w was realized that that is basically what runs the kitchen and suddenly oh, you're no. <laughs> suddenly you're underwater with like no way to cook food <laughs> um and for whatever reason whoever designed this thing um must have been on crack because y you're looking for this piece in like this tiny vent um that you like you have to crawl into and just um reach w awkwardly with like some welding tool type thing um and um uh, give me a uh perception and awareness roll or alertness if you have if you don't have awareness uh, i have awareness just one dot less so okay give me awareness then Kind of wondering what my chances are of getting stuck in here. Um, and what's my and, difficulty? Uh, your difficulty is five. Two successes. Great. Um, as you're kind of like pushing yourself against the walls of this vent, trying to get through this this tight space. Um, you know, you, there's no real chance of you getting stuck here. Um, you have enough space. It's just awkward. Um, and absolute worst case, there are entry points to this kind of vent ventilation system that, um, 
would have been harder for you to get into, but if you absolutely need to get out of them, you can. <laughs> um, they're the kind that, you know, you'll have to drop like seven feet to the floor. So it would have been hard to get up to there, but mm -hmm. you can get out. Um, and as you kind of pull yourself along, your hand touches part of the vent wall and the, um, the hairs on the back of your neck kind of stand up and you can feel this kind of groove in in the wall, in the wall there and kind of touch it and um it it's like it spells something do you try and take a closer look yeah um if it's really really dark i'm going to pull out a flashlight take perfect. a look perfect yeah it is a little dark so flashlight's great and um you kind of click your light on and you look at it and it says the word Nautilus. Nautilus. Mumble that. Um, like, does it look like it's scratched in, or does it look like so, like it was like printed into the side, like it was meant to be there? It looks like it was meant to be there, like it was printed in okay. to the the metal that this thing is made out of. Okay. Um. And. and that's not yeah, the name so. of the ship, is it? No, it is not. Uh, the name of the sh the name of the sub is the, uh, I believe, DSRV Rogue. Hmm. Well, that's bizarre. Um. So you continue along to to finish this up because you kind of hear people grumbling angrily in the in the mess area and you manage to fix it it's really a simple fix it's just getting there that is the hard part um and you kind of pop out of the vent ventilation system uh in the ceiling of the mess hall <laughs> please tell me i scare someone <laughs> um it, it's not so much you scare so someone as um you you like pop out the vent it uh lands on the floor i'm gonna need the other three of you to give me dexterity and athletics rolls <laughs> <laughs> beautiful all right i'm very much picturing like this thing just like falls like slams and then heather just like kind of like like just kind of like drops out <laughs> just like is like hanging like halfway out of it like with the uh, difficulty like, six up. for the rest of you I'm guessing a uh, hand-eye coordination doesn't apply for this. It does not. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Wow. That's actually... I wish I had a specialty. I rolled quite a few tens, man. Holy crap. Six successes. <laughs> Every die rolled a success, so five. <laughs> And, uh, Nolan, did you manage to get out of the way? Dex Sorry, and I was, I was, yeah. Dex and Athletics <laughs> difficulty six. Sorry, I was suggesting rote ideas to the, uh... I know, I can see the chat, and it's blocking all of your faces. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I'm like, well, I can't see people. That's fine. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So Dex and Athletics, oh, that's a great role for me. Uh... <laughs> oh, I got a success at seven. Nice. Is it, is, um, it, was it, was it was it seven? Was it eight? It was six. It was six. So Yay! You got a, you got a success. <laughs> so good job. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Heather, you pop out this this vent from the from the system, and it's falling down and it's falling directly at Nolan's head um, until Tegan like reaches up and just kind of bats it out of the air, <laughs> and and uh, Sophia kind of dodges in the other direction. Um, <sighs> And you kind of, Nolan, you flinch, and you're like, where did uh, that come from? Th thanks. And Heather's head is just sticking out of the vent system <laughs> from the ceiling. Uh, Hi, Heather. Hey. Uh, how's it going? What you doing up there? Um, fixing things? There was a thing, and it wasn't... Any There's something to new fixed. to add to your list, Heather. Or Heather. Tegan's going to point to the. 
Um, from Thing. from like the kitchen area, you hear uh, Gabby, the mess clerk or mess uh, specialist, um, shout, "Did you fix the motor yet?" Did I fix the motor? Was that the you motor did. that it was being fixed? Yes. And then, so Heather's just gonna like lean further down and just gonna yell through like through to the mess. Just, I yeah. fixed the motor. Thank God. And um, you can hear the sound of like. Um, ovens firing up and she's like okay 20 minutes till dinner and Heather goes still not a god don't worry give it give it some time um so Heather you're welcome to to try and get out here or you can kind of go back the the way you came <laughs> um the way I came was terrible and I had yep. to climb like up and down and through things so we're gonna drop out from here. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna attempt to do the thing where you kind of like wiggle down and like she's gonna try. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try. Sure. Yeah. Um, give me. Uh, let's go decks and athletics. Um, hey. a d difficulty of. Uh, let's say seven. Um, and if anyone wants to try and uh, and catch her, you can try. <laughs> Deacon's gonna try and catch her. Yeah, I'll try and catch her. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, let's just go. What Dex was that? Be? Difficulty Dex like five to catch her because you all you really have to do is stand under her and not like <laughs> botch the roll. Get hit by flailing limbs. Yeah. All right, Dex and Athletics. Oh, balls. Um, I rolled, so you said difficulty five. I did. <laughs> so I rolled seven dice. Okay. I rolled three ones. And then I rolled only two successes from uh, besides that. So I believe that's what the kids would call a botch. <laughs> I believe that is what the kids would call a botch. <laughs> um, Heather, how many successes did you get on your roll? I got one. Excellent. Um, so as you kind of uh, shimmy your way kind of through this hole and um, you're kind of doing it like you kind of move so that you can go down feet first. So you're not like head to paper to, to the yeah. floor of the sub. Um, and you like hang on for a second as you see that Tegan's getting ready to to catch you um and then you drop and you Tegan catches you with her head um <laughs> she was just a little bit off um but you've managed to like Cushion not my break You've managed to not break anything. Um, Tegan's also managed to not break anything, but you are on her body on the floor. Uh, mm. My knight in was... shining armor. <coughs> I was such ready a daring yet. rescue. Mm, I, yeah. Ow. Oh, I think I'm gonna have a bump there in the morning. Oh. I guess I should, you know, get my foot off of your face yeah I'm yeah gonna that's get not up. <laughs> quite my fetish i'm gonna gonna say heather's gonna like like clamber off and like actually like go stand up and we'll offer a hand to help help uh, tegan stand up <laughs> tegan will gladly take take a hand and get get back brush brush herself off a little bit and just like Rub her, rub her got, head a little bit. You got a, you, you got a bit of a, um, and there, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's like a boot print, like <laughs> a little bit placed. of grease and dirt, like right, like on the face, kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. There is. You can kind just of make it the tread of your boot get a little. The sleeve, uh, like they're just gonna like grab her sleeve and is gonna like try and like rub it, which probably just smears whatever grease oh. there is. Ugh. <sighs> Well, you're, you're kind okay? of mechanic, right? Yeah, we are yeah. fine. Grease is good for you. Pat on the shoulder. It's good thanks. Enough. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 
I think Sophia's just kind of still awkwardly working through her tablet and kind of ignoring the kerfuffle that's going on in the corner. That's fair. So... <laughs> just awkwardly standing there. Um, that is one of the several times you four have all been interacting on the submarine. Um, and not the most awkward of your introductions, but definitely not the least. But we're going to go back to the present moment. As Heather sees, uh, Heather's remembering this, and she kind of opens her eyes. Um, now there's so much in the chat, I have to scroll all the way back to this. Um, so Heather took um, four aggravated damage in that crossing of the dimensional anomaly. And you can feel it. Like, you, you are so sure that when you open your eyes, you are going to be just a shredded mess. Because it hurts so much. But you do open your eyes. And you don't actually see a shredded mess of yourself. Um, all of the pain feels internal. It's it's like in between the cells of your skin rather than like a cut you would feel. Mm. I don't think Heather's ever been through the dimensional anomaly, although you are aware of it, uh, being a void engineer. And so this is the first time you have felt this kind of pain, the kind of pain where your soul, your very magical soul itself has been shredded. Um, your genius, with the de-atom, your idol. de-atomizer. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know the damage has been done, but you know it can also heal. What you do see is that not everyone was as lucky as you. Because you see Sabian's corpse that is shredded. You can see that damage on the outside. And her lifeless eyes are just staring at you as her body floats. And you realize that there is suddenly no gravity here. Wherever you have come out, there is no gravity. You can see that everything is dark except for this intermittent red kind of alarm light <laughs> that is just flashing. But there's no real sounds. You can you can hear your own breathing and it's getting a little raspy. And I'm going to give you this without rolling because you are a, you are a void engineer. Um, you don't think the life support systems on this submarine are currently operational. Motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> and there is a good chance that if you don't fix something and soon, everyone is, if anybody else made it through that, they are also going to die. What would you like to do? Uh, I would like to figure out where I am, which I guess means, are, do I have my goggles to do. be able to, okay. We're, we're yeah. gonna turn on our our dark vision flashlighty bullshit. Cool, I will say, I think you also, um, I 
I watched most of the Extra Life game again. I think you had Prime Side up for like the day. Um, I did, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give that to you anyway. So you do have Prime Side up, which um, is giving you like these this weird like golden trace through the the air um, mm-hmm. that kind of looks like Prime Magic, but you're not really sure. Um, maybe it's the dimensional anomaly, like retreating you're, you're not really sure um you don't know what it is anyway you kind of see that but uh yeah feel free to uh roll for dark sight okay um that's just my your enlightenment yeah haha <laughs> that's a 10 and a 2 cool uh so... you manage dark sight yeah yay uh, actually 10s do explode and um and count double now, because that's the rule we're going with, because magic is awesome. Three then, because I, I got an eight. I thought it was only it counting only double on uh, specialties. Oh, right, sorry, double on specialty. Yeah. So. so in that case, two. Right. Two, excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, the new rule, gotta, gotta remember that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, probably new rules. Right. <laughs> and we haven't really used it in, in Victorian era either. Yeah, um, so. <laughs> But yes, so two successes, great. You turn on dark sight, um, and got you've got goggles. it for the scene. Yeah, <laughs> looking. Um, with that, <clears throat> you see, um, at the end of uh, your time at the base, when everybody kind of ran onto the the submarine, you closed the door, you started leaving, and then there was that explosion. Um, a lot of people had basically just entered the submarine and hadn't really dispersed from there. So you are currently in a um, collection of bodies. All floating. Yeah, all floating. Um, You can see Tegan, Nolan, and Sophia Mm -hmm. all there. Um, Unless you go look at them, you're not necessarily sure they're alive, but you do see them, Um, as well as the other... uh, the other folks on the submarine, uh, like Captain Captain Gamble, um, who had gotten back on the ship, and um, and then of course Sabian, as well as a couple of, of others that uh, no longer matter. Um, do I see who's the doctor on board for like first first aid? Um, so Sophia is um, probably your best bet there. They were. Okay. Uh, running with a bit of a skeleton crew and they weren't expecting anyone to really need a lot and they had a couple of people with life magic um Mm -hmm. or you know medical ability as the technocracy (laughs) would probably say instead um but you do know that uh sophia is um part of the progenitors so chances are good that she at least has some knowledge in that area okay i want to check on sophia because we need someone to actually handle first aid because that's not my area and then I need to, I want to do that quickly. And then I need to go figure out life support systems and what's broken. Fantastic. Um, so I'm checking to see if there's any hazards, like loose wires sparking around here and, you know, make sure I don't trip myself up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sophia, uh, you have, so I actually need you to roll your stamina because you had put on your soaking egg for the full day last game mm. <laughs> several months ago very good decision <laughs> i'm pretty sure i'm wearing a black suit so armor ah yes cool two uh difficulty uh six one success great um do you have the stats for black suit in yes front of you? is this avatar storm stuff um, yeah, some it, of it is armor. W- armor doesn't help. Yeah, some of it is. <laughs> is it? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Provides an armor rating yeah. of four with no okay. dex penalty. Cool. Um, so you don't take the uh the two lethal I had rolled from the explosion knocking people off their feet. Um, Heather didn't. I didn't uh, roll any successes for her, so she was lucky there. <laughs> But uh, your armor absorbs that, and um, you take uh, two egg from 
the Avatar Storm. Okay. And that's with your soak, so. Um, and, and Kelly, because I know you know the rules, um, yes, I am adding extra because of some stuff. <laughs> I just want to check. I'm using the Mage the Ascension 20th Anniversary Sheet. Yep. And on the health boxes, it's a slash X and a star. Star is ag, right? Star is ag, yes. Okay, so I just fill in two boxes with that. Yes. Precisely. So that brings me to a minus one penalty, it looks like. Yeah. At the hurt level. I found all my notes. Ooh. I have no nice. idea what happened to my notes from this game, so. <laughs> yeah, I grabbed some of the important things, and one of them was the fact that you had, you had so gag on for the full day. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> um, so, um, she is, Sophia is looking, um, much like you, if she has any damage, it's internal. Um, her I don't suit. Where the blood's supposed to be. Yeah, her, her suit has taken a little bit of, of, um, a little bit of damage, but not enough to render it inoperable. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, but she is breathing, and she's just uh, currently um, a little unconscious, uh, but could be woken up. Uh, just a little if, unconscious. Just a little unconscious. If there is anything I can do to wake her up more quickly, I will do that. Um, honestly, if you just go, like, shake her, she will okay. likely wake up. Yeah, okay. Because I've got basic, I've got, like, two dots in medicine, so, like, well, he's able to do like emergency Fair. basic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm gonna wake her up. Yep. And just So Sophia, you can't come through. <sighs> and just... it's it's dark. Um, but hey. Heather's in front of you. Yeah. Hey, hey, it's uh... I think you see us a flinch like she almost punched you in the face. Well, please like, don't control it. Me. Um, I need to go deal with failing um, systems, so I'm going to leave you here to deal with the, the, the all them, the, the bodies, unconscious, medical. You can do that, right? What happened? A uh, big explosion. I think we went through the dimensional anomaly, and I feel like I'm made of broken... It's like my cells are being shredded with glass and I really don't like this, so I have to go and fix this before we all die anyway. You know, life I, I don't think the life, the life support system is, is not- Less working. talking, more going. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm glad you're not dead. Okay, bye. Um, and Heather's gonna <laughs> just push off and like try and figure out how to navigate and zero she, G. She'll start going to go. Look at what what's going on, and triage people. Cool, uh, Christine. I'm gonna leave you for a minute. You are um, next in my my thing anyway, so this works out great. I feel but, like she has half a moment of just like, wait, I'm floating. Yes, absolutely. And then <laughs> figures it out and kicks off. Yeah, um, but Heather. You go off looking for... You know where all of the systems are in this place. Um, you Is can there get a there. shortcut through the walls and the vents? Because I will absolutely um, do that. Yeah, yeah. There's... I mean, it's actually... You've climbed through all these vents all, you know, the past week. Uh, this is so much easier with, you know, zero G than it Amazing. was when there was gravity. Um, so yeah, like you can... place was built for it. Great. You can absolutely um, get through the vents. Yeah, okay. Just kind of sneak through, get to the vent, the um, main hub where all the systems are, and try and figure out what's wrong and how much of the ship we still have. Perfect. Um, okay. Let me just take a quick look at your sheet here, because I'm going to figure out if Google Drive will let me open it. There we go. Um, okay. I want you to give me 
I'm going to give you a couple of rolls to give me. Um, just to... A, as you're going through, you you have been working on the ship. You are familiar with the ship. So I want you to give me a wits and alertness roll. Followed okay. by a intelligence and technology roll. And you can use your um, creative specialty. Okay. Um, and I have, you said four aggravated? Yes. Okay. And so does that, it's just been a second, so does that reduce, that reduces my number of dice, right? Or is it just... Oh, I've forgotten how it works in this system. Yes? Because I got minus yes. two. Yes, yeah. so that, that reduces your dice pool by two. Yeah, okay, it doesn't just make it more difficult. Yes, no that is correct. Because, okay. yeah, because because difficulty is on a sliding scale anyway, the minus yeah. two is about your dice pool. Yes, okay. Yeah. So you said wits and alertness followed by okay so yeah so wits and alertness uh difficulty for that is only going to be uh five that is two successes okay yep and then and then your int and technology with um specialty in creative Uh, difficulty for that one? Um, uh, let's do uh, six. Let's go with six. This is tech you're familiar with. And um, would just reminding me that specializations on um, makes tens explode? Makes tens explode, yeah. Okay. And then on when you have specialties on. Uh, your spheres that's mm -hmm. that you get an extra success plus four four, four on that four great yeah um so here's the bad news there was something something to do with crossing the dimensional anomaly has caused every system on this ship to on the sub to shut down the good news is you can fix it probably it's good it's good yeah we're gonna we're <laughs> gonna work on that cool um and i'm gonna leave you here to work on that uh well you know we talked to christine here for a bit so before you get woken up Sophia. Um, what you remember of previous mission and even before that, um, the memory that comes to you is when uh, the Deviancy Scene Investigations Unit was merged with damage control. Um, you had just gotten back from a mission that had gone a little sideways. Uh, you'd been trying to clean up after, um, after one of the crazy mages, the, the marauders, the mad ones, they tend to be called. Um, some NWO operatives just hadn't done their damn job and, and fully cleared the area before they brought you guys in. Um, and you're not even entirely sure what went wrong but the reason it's coming to you now is because the dimensional anomaly was called down at that point it it struck it hit your entire team and it didn't hurt quite like this did but it's familiar and while you had been relatively unscathed physically at that point um there was a requirement um that you actually go to the uh, descartes Inst institute of mental health to get a debrief it's just something that happens whenever there's something to do with the dimensional anomaly um because of those void engineers they 
deal with it a lot more than the other conventions and um they're a little bit more uh i don't want to say capable of dealing with it because you're all capable of dealing with it but they have some tools and some tricks up their sleeve so i as well i'm not going to assume um whether begrudgingly or not you have to go <laughs> And you go to your appointment and you open the door to the office and Dr. Nolan Westcroft is the one who you get to see today. Hello? Hello. Um, I'm, Please. I'm here for my appointment. Uh, of course. Uh, d grab a seat. She'll come in and sit down, and she's got kind of like a very tight posture. She's not She's not thrilled about being here. Can I offer you a, a bottle of water, a, a kombucha, uh, anything to help you relax a little bit? Some Zoloft. <laughs> it, it's a joke. Uh, no, I'm, I'm all right. Thank you. Well, hold, hold on. This... I find that silence is not really conducive to a conversation. One moment. <laughs> Turns on his metronome. So, um, why are you, why are you coming in today? Uh, well, my team had an encounter with a dimensional anomaly due to mm -hmm. an uncleared scene, and we have to be cleared before we're allowed to go back to work. And how does that make you feel? A little impatient. It works very important to you? It's what I do. Um, true. Um, I guess our work does define us. Um, are you finding that um, you've had any difficulties in your home life after encountering... The dimensional anomaly. I mean, no more than usual having a job so there that are takes difficulties. me all over. So there are difficulties in your home life that are related to travel only? In, in the sense that my family, who's not in the know, doesn't particularly enjoy my job. What do they think they you do? They understand. Some sort of science thing. Some sort of science thing. It's um, fair. Um, tell me about what you saw. What you remember. Uh, well, I mean, pain. Are you still feeling pain? No, not anymore. It ended with the moment, but it all came down and it felt much like you came apart. Are you having any, um, any dreams or, um, or nightmares about the pain or the immediate aftermath? Um, no. That, that's a good sign. Did you lose anyone on the mission? Any of your colleagues, or...? As far as I'm aware, everyone left the site fine. I don't know if any had lingering issues. I don't always work with the same team, so don't always know. I've become used to um, not knowing. So you work with damage control. What what damage were you attempting to control when you encountered the anomaly? Werewolves? Vampires? I'm sorry. Um, uh, transitional uh, lupine bodies and... Um, What's the terminology? One of the mad ones. Oh. 
We were more of a cleanup squad than fully dealing with it. So you didn't actually encounter the mad one yourself? You weren't inside of its psychoactive field? Not as far as I'm aware. Merely that something it had left behind brought the, dem the anomaly to, Did to us. And it didn't leave behind anything that was particularly... Um, Irreconcilable? Woolly mammoth bones or exploding stars inside of vending machines? It usually it no. passes with the psychoactive field, but sometimes there are lingering traces that can cause problems. Remnants, um, psycho echoes, psychic echoes. It's not psycho echoes. <laughs> um. As far as I'm aware, we cleared everything. Hmm. Can I get you to do me a favor? I, I suppose. Great. Um, well, um, what we're going to do now is I just want to quickly run you through a couple of tests. All right. Um, have you had right. any? It, it will be quick. Um, this is just routine. Are you noticing any um, feedback, audio disturb? Do you? Ha um, I'm noticing your file. Do you? You don't have any implanted implanted enhancements? No gene mods. Uh, nothing really technological. Um, I By, I was. By, more of a pharmacopoeist. Biological. And we focus more on, as some of the others call it, potions. Potions. Are, are you still taking narcotics then? Not currently. I use them when I need them in the field. You're not here seeking a pain prescription, but you could probably make it yourself, so that's good. Um. Are you noticing any... No. Um, okay, so first of all, take this. Hand it to her. And just squeeze it as you need, okay? And I want you to try to squeeze it in time with the metronome. Okay? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Just try to keep that pace, okay? Okay. All Second right. of all, okay? And then just look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Okay. You're following the light? You're following the light. Uh, and uh, he's going to do a mind scan on her. Basically, uh, using a mind one, entropy one, looking for weaknesses while... Yeah, I'm just doing ASMR. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so good. It's so uh, good. I'm just in the chat being like... I'm sitting here trying not to laugh. Yeah. It's great. I know. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. You can do the scan. Okay. So basically, I want to know whether or not... Uh, so I'm actually going to use my first dot of dimensional science as well. And mm -hmm. I am curious whether or not this encounter with the dimensional anomaly has had any of a shard effect on her. Basically, if she's had any uh, Klingons after the fact, given okay. what I understand about the dimensional anomaly, basically just checking for psychological damage, uh, looking for gaps in her, in her brain more than anything. Okay. Uh... That's a botch. <laughs> I'm pretty so sure many it's things in her brain. One, two, three. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Considering you made that a conjunctional effect. Um, yeah. Even in my office, even if I, I didn't say I spent willpower, but uh, no. yeah, there's like at, at the very best, Question. it's a fail. Mm -hmm. This is happening pre last game. Yes. Well, I do have two fairly severe flaws. Uh huh. Did this add to them and make them that level? I think it's part of what made it that level. So a three point nightmares and a two point PTSD. 
Yeah. I, I think there's definitely um made it worse at least. She already had yeah. a lot of material for it, but Yeah, it, it definitely gave like it gave your brain material for the nightmares and um you know probably not the PTSD specifically, but it's it's um maybe more like complex PTSD where it's over time, some stuff has built, built up and this is just added to that. I, did, I popped a cap. But honestly, I've, I've got the lowest of the PTSD flaw. I've got the higher of the nightmares flaw. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So you've probably, those have probably gotten a little worse. Um, but Nolan, um, you, there's definitely a problem here caused by the dimensional anomaly. Um, and she's lying to you about it. She knows that there's a, there's a something there. You, you're not really sure what it is. You probably have to do more tests, but there's some, something that's following her back. I think that's all we have time for our appointment today. Um, uh, based on your answers here and just what I've read about the report, um, I am seeing a little bit of conflicting information. I think we should meet again and discuss this further. Sometimes memories can be hazy. This is nothing that you did wrong. This is just a fact of the human psyche. We're not meant to experience the type of trauma that you did. You're incredibly strong. And... Sometimes strength needs right, a little bit of help. Can we get something in soon, then? Uh, the nearest I have is, um, let's see, it's Tuesday. I can do next Friday for our next session. All right, as long as we can get through this quickly. Our docket is really full. and I need to get back in the field. The best agents in the field are agents that are sound of mind and body. Um... In the meanwhile, I am going to put you on desk duty so that you can at least catch up on your paperwork. And, um, but I am going to recommend that you be limited to 30 hour work weeks. All right. Please, please try to, try to only do the 30 hours. I, I've been noticing that you're, um, you're normally pulling double that as an average. There's always something to damage control. And that's something you that kind of echoes in your head that you are kind of glad that this merger happened where you moved into damage control because um, you'd actually applied for a transfer out of deviancy scene because it wasn't quite what you wanted it was it was the cleanup crew it was the people who came in after the fact and you wanted that action um which is why you were glad to be on this mission and as the submarine docks at the base and you're preparing for whatever is happening over there because you know it's something weird and it's um you know that you had all expected the base to be either destroyed or just lights out, something terrible to have happened, and nothing seems to be that terrible. But you're still suspicious, so as the sub docks and you're preparing to, to walk onto the base, um, Tegan is standing next to you, um, getting ready to go where she needs to go, which is a different area of the base than the rest of you. And Captain Gamble's there saying, let's, everyone be careful. We don't know what this is. It could be nothing. Or it might be more than that. And the sub door opens and the two people who greeted you are there. 
Ava, the woman in the in the lovely suit. She's very poised. And the gentleman standing next to her, who um, I believe uh, Heather pinged as having active magical effects. And you're taken into the base. Tegan, you head off to um, one of the labs where you have been asked to collect some data, um, provided you could access the base, of course, but they wanted to make sure that that data was collected. And the rest of you head towards the control room. And while I know nobody out of character remembers exactly what was said or how you handled this, um, I'm going to let you have a little bit of a scene here of just the suspicious what what is happening. <laughs> um, and, oh, and uh, Nolan, this was also where you... Um, looked at, at Ava and recognized a, um, recognized her name from a list uh, from Special Projects Division. But you managed to hide that very, very well <laughs> because you are good at what you do. Yep. And that's where stuff started to hit the fan and I started taking a lot of drugs. <laughs> You also gave us the ability to talk to each other via mind. Yep. Uh, which oh, I had great. that on for the chapter. I had Ring of Truth, Mind Shield, and Mental Link set for the chapter, apparently, but not sure what. Cool. Uh... Yeah, so um, you're going to keep all that here. And mm. then um, when we lose go it. back to yeah. present time, uh, you will lose it. So yeah, definitely uh, learn some stuff there. Yep. So Ava will look and say, if you'll come with me, I can take you to the control room. And Captain Gamble just kind of shares a look with you, Nolan, of just like, something's up. <laughs> Interesting. I've always wanted to see the con control room of something like this. It is a fascinating area of technology. Well, that is, is this your, they is don't this start your walking right away. Sophia is just going to kind of rock on her feet kind of impatiently. This is your area of expertise, Miss Ava. Uh, not specifically. This is I'm overseeing the projects down here. There. Um, Amy, do you have something? Um, I just found my notes from that game okay, cool. and I have mage sight and then I have multiple things listed. I think I had a conjunctional effect of prime dimensional science, entropy and matter all up or something. I know I was looking at a couple things. I could be mistaken though. So I don't know if, cause I know I was looking at Ava going, this is weird. Yeah, I, um, can't remember that part either but yeah you you had a few things up mm -hmm. um in any case uh you definitely know that the uh gentleman who is walking with her um something is not right about him mm -hmm. um but he comes with you to the to the bridge um tegan a couple of uh other ship members head off towards the the laboratory area with you and you're actually met by um a gentleman in a lab coat uh just kind of further down the hallway um who looks at you and and goes iteration x here for data collection you got it uh tegan orner um thank you for uh 
granting us access to your lab. Absolutely. Um, we, of course, uh, weren't expecting anyone. The uh, the systems have been down for a while, so I'm glad that they sent someone to collect us. And uh, if you'll please come with me, and of course. I'll take you, take you down the hallway. Um, and the rest of you have this, you know. Uh, you included Tegan in the mind link, and um, because. I am retconning some stuff here. Uh, we're just going to say that she also still has it. She's just in a different area. So you have the distance and that's fine. <laughs> so she can still hear all of what you're talking about in your head. Um, and I will point out one other thing that Nolan noticed, which was that um, some black had flickered across Ava's eyes the moment that kind of the sub door opened and and you locked eyes mm, with her. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you put the mind shield up. You gave us the image of it and then Christine's character was like, "Oh shit, I've been seeing these in nightmares." Gave us an image of it and that's when we're going, "Hmm, something's fishy here." Yep. And it's not the fish outside. No. Nope. <laughs> There's a least <laughs> fishy of them. Fish. Right? Um so you all uh go in your directions. Um, Tegan, you do have uh, this side mission to do, but... She um, will, as she leaves, she's gonna say, yeah. I'm gonna be as quick as I can. I will come back. I don't want to be separated if things are going sideways. I will be back soon. If you don't see, see for me in 15 minutes, come find me. And <laughs> yes, I'll be back. Um, I'll be back. And you do manage to reconnect with them um, before all of the shit goes down, as uh, yeah. as we saw in game. Yeah, <laughs> you managed to come back, which is great. I managed to come back and close doors. It was great. Yep, it's good times. Um, and we will talk about what what you saw over there in a moment. For the rest of you, you reach the bridge. Um, you're kind of it feels weird there's this tension in the air and you're all talking to each other about how weird this is about how there's probably a really big problem um, and Captain Gamble you hear hit the table um, as he's talking to this woman who's just staring at a Con uh, control panel not looking at him at all and he says that um, for God's sakes look at me you're my wife and that's when she looks up and you can see just complete black over her eyes and that's when shit goes down <laughs> and yeah. I remember how it happened at this point. I think it was like not anymore. And then Nolan mind suggested one of her guards to shoot her. <laughs> yep. He absolutely did. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it worked. And I used my taser. Yep. And my mighty pen. Yep. Because energy weapons, not as dangerous underwater as an actual gun. Yep. Probably still has her gun somewhere, but she probably left it on the sub. And I remember no point Heather. Hesitation setting the trying to set the place up getting it ready to blow using and uh, using a combination of entropy and so on yeah to get the timing right also yeah. nolan kind of was going crazy and started singing there i forgot what song you mentioned but you started singing some weird like 80s song to us in your mind that was going through everything <laughs> it was great we were I hearing a weird soundtrack yeah because you were losing it because your stress or something is one of your flaws. Right, you, right. Your flaw. You oh, no, no, going. no, no. It wasn't a you know, sort of. I forget what song was well, it. Do you guys remember? I forget. I literally just I watched forget. this episode this weekend, but I forget what it was. <laughs> I was working um, for the weekend. I was oh, working for the weekend. Of course it was. Will you come yeah. out tonight? Every and time. as all of that kind of comes to to a head. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, Sophia, you are back in the present moment um, looking at in the darkness, you can see them now as your eyes kind of adjust and the red light flashes a couple of times and because Heather pointed it out, you can see all of these floating bodies like a awful floating graveyard in space. <laughs> I mean, that's not dramatic at all. No. Uh, she, she's going to push off and start trying to get to them one by one. And first thing she does is check for, I guess, you know what, actually, mm -hmm. what does she know about going through the dimensional anomaly and how magic might work on the other side? Um, give me, let's see. Do you have like cosmology, esoterica, occult? I have esoterica. Cool. Um, roll me intelligence plus esoterica. Okay. A uh, difficulty of eight because it's esoterica. Okay. That was cocked. Okay, two. Cool. Um, you know that uh, the Void Engineers do cross the Dimensional Anomaly from time to time. They do it less frequently now than they used to. Um, and less they go to those areas less frequently now than before the Dimensional Anomaly, so it's definitely stopped them a little bit there. Um, so your abilities should work um you're not entirely sure whether or not there's going to be any additional consequences or anything like that because my my thought is to put the life side on and very That's quickly identify that one's still living that one's still living that one's still living ignore the dead ones yep that is the best way to go about that. Uh, so I think that's what she's going to do. Then is just try and turn her life side on. Cool. Um, roll me your enlightenment. Um, don't, I, I was going to say, don't worry about wound penalties with enlightenment. Okay. So it doesn't reduce your dice there. Uh, what's the difficulty for this? Um, uh, like three. Okay, that's three three successes then. Cool. Um, yeah, you turn on life sight. Um, Tegan is alive, mostly because um, there's the the implants, and so there's some weird interference there. But she is alive. Yeah, a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird, but it it's a person, and she's alive. <laughs> um, Nolan is alive. Um, obviously Heather is alive and there's a life sign you're not super familiar with, but he's like, it's like not in this room. It is human and you know, it's one of the crew, but you're just not sure who it is. Um, and it's like, in a not in room. the current area you're in. All right. I will, um, so I'll go and check on Tegan and Nolan first. Okay. And try and judge how hurt they are before I'll try and go off and find that other. Cool. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, one second. Let me just do this. Okay. Um, so Tegan has taken, um, Tegan has also taken four aggravated damage and one lethal. I do have second skin, which is armor rating three. I don't know if that applies to anything. 
yeah, that that will help with that lethal. So um, sweet. And I don't I don't think that one covers uh, or yeah, it doesn't cover this aggravated. No. Um. And um. Nolan has one ag. Uh, he got away pretty easily. <laughs> mm. um, so he's just been like knocked a little silly and um, everyone kind of went a little un went unconscious uh, through all of that because while you may not have taken lasting damage, it was definitely traumatic and uh, your brain didn't want to deal with it. So it just kind of shut down a little. <laughs> Um, but they both will be able to wake up with some kind of stimulus from here. All right, then. Um, though Tegan is quite hurt. I believe she's up around wounded if she took four eggs. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's about, it's about half, a little over half of your health boxes. You have seven yeah. health boxes. So. Now... My impression is that Ag is harder to heal, and you can maybe heal it to lethal, and that's generally where you can go to, which then heals easier, or faster yeah. at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can't remember if... I should have looked this up. I can't remember if there's specific about healing Avatar Storm yeah. damage. Um, so, I know there's um, special Paradox healing, but... So normally it's just you spend a point of quint per point of aggravated damage that needs healed? Right. Okay. Okay. Or primal energy, I should say. Yeah. Okay. And you can always um, just, Christine, since you're new to prime, um, yeah. you can. There is a rote that allows you to siphon primal energy for a specific use. Um, so normally, you can anybody with prime one can trade a health box of aggravated damage for a point of prime or a point of quintessence, I should say. Um, you there's a sub rote that allows you to do it for a point of lethal, which heals in about a a day usually um for a for a point of quint that is usable on a sphere but there's another version of that where you take a point of bashing draw a very specific type of quintessence out that can only be used for a singular rote mm -hmm. so basically you could take bashing to heal other people's ag by drawing quint out of yourself and using your own energy darcy has that yeah at Prime 3, you can start destroying, mm -hmm. like, sacrificing, like, hamsters and stuff to get the energy. Okay. So I need Prime 3, in other words. Start prime sacrificing three, small animals. Prime 3 life 3 is great. <laughs> yeah, basically, you just do a blood transfusion or something. Mm. Okay. Oh, hamster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hamster blood. Mm. Those space hamsters, you know. Interesting. Oh, we all know these are larger anyway. We're yeah. blood. So the bashing on her one, would something like doing like taking the time to do one of those kind of in the field blood transfusions, person to person, like make it coincidental? Yeah. You're just giving her an oil change. In theory, <laughs> yeah. All right. She's gonna see if she can wake Nolan first, because it would be better to be safe enough with somebody else awake to help look after while she's dealing with Tegan. Sounds good, yep. Um, Alright, so he doesn't seem all that damaged. Yeah, his life sign is, is very strong in comparison to say um, right. well, any of the dead bodies. Uh, she's gonna do a quick check down, see if it feels like he's got anything broken. And at that point, she's a little imp she's impatient. And he doesn't seem hurt. So she's gonna slap him. Ah. Alright, are you awake? If I say no, will you do that again? Uh huh. Because then, yes, I uh, guess I am awake. I am very awake. Excellent. It's a really good technique. It works every time, unless they're dead, but it generally works. Um, we've gone it... through the dimensional anomaly. Uh, we've all taken some damage. Tegan is quite heavily damaged, so I'll need to do a procedure that will take some time. And I didn't want to do it alone. Everybody else in here is dead. Everybody 
and she's gonna leave him and go back to Tegan and start like rolling up her sleeves and pulling stuff out of like how hurt are you the pouches and stuff she have in various pockets and whatnot. How how hurt are you, Miss Smith? Uh, not as badly as Tegan is. Oh, for God's sake, here, open open your mouth. Here, it's quick acting. Last thing you need is to be be distracted while you're doing this. All right, she's been given lots of stuff by other pharmacopias. So sure, she... what this what this is this looks like a this looks like a breathe right or probably not a breathe right. This looks like a Listerine strip. Just put it on All your right. tongue. Uh, and I'm going to do a mind effect if that's good for you. Uh, I'm going to do sure. uh, mind two, uh, pain reduction, and uh, with some alertness in there too. I'm gonna make her peppy. I'm gonna give her basically a caffeine patch for her tongue, but also with mixed with a little bit of Vicodin. Nice. Okay. Yeah, give me the roll. Uh, what's that? Difficulty. Difficulty four. Four. Okay. What are my yep. resonances? I forgot. Okay, that's one success thanks to that freaking one. <laughs> oh no. Um, what are you with? Well, actually, you got a one anyway, so... I got a one. Uh, one, one is not a success, so uh, your one success, though, that helps. Yeah, um, give yeah. her a minute or so, a few rounds at least. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to hand with that just a little, and yeah, you, she manages to... Or she starts to feel the effects of that. Um, and here is a uh, fun little fact for the chat uh, in real life here. According to the books, the technocratic paradigm in the deep universe is vulgar because there's no consensual reality. So even if it's something that's kind of coincidental, it's probably vulgar. So, um, Kelly, you're going to take one point of paradox. Yay! Damn it. <laughs> that's okay. Um, certain, certain effects, like Heather's um, dark sight on her goggles, are actually coincidental because it's like it's a her effect um rather than on so if, if nolan had been doing that on himself it mm -hmm. would have been coincidental if he'd been, but doing it on someone else it's vulgar sounds good i'll eventually move this up to lsd where it'll be coincidental again vision yep. quest <laughs> by the way um, if i had botched i would have said i grabbed the wrong package that seems about right yeah <laughs> Because I do have dissolving LSD strips in one of my pockets on this character. <laughs> oh, good. Um, but yeah, so your uh, Sophia, your pain recedes. Um, you're not going to have any wound penalties. I mean, it's on on dice or on uh, enlightenment rules. You're not going to have it anyway. But um, for for the next like minute or so, as you okay. may be doing some of these checks, um, you're not going to have wound penalties. And All you start right. to feel just a little bit peppier and more awake. Well, I'm thinking I would want to do a medicine check on her first. Sure. Uh, to see exactly what is going wrong yeah. and how she's been hurt. So I have a very clear knowledge then. I figure that would just be not much easier for her to direct uh, her healing. Okay, give me that medicine check. So medicine uh, and... Uh, intelligence and difficulty of let's go seven because she's part machine and um, and most of the damage you're looking for is uh, soul damage <laughs> actually technically all the damage you're looking for is soul damage but some of it you know reflects in the body two <laughs> yay um, yeah you can tell that um, this is significant internal damage that uh, will take a blood transfusion and some extra effort to uh, to help with and you can't really just make it go away like you could with some other things so. all right well because we're floating to make sure she stays in place uh sophia is going to straddle her waist and lock her legs around her that seems about right yeah and pull her sleeve up 
pull some gear out, expose an area of a vein on Tegan, and blood transfusion it up, and use life to end the prime to do the bashing thing. I think she's going to do just do one point, because um, I can't really take much more off of that without spending all of my quint. So That's fair. Yeah. And I also don't want to take that much bashing <laughs> to take off four egg. Yes. Especially because you can't soak this bashing because you are causing it to yourself. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I, um, but bashing is not end of the world. It'll go away. I'll just feel a little bruised. Yeah, absolutely. So I just um, roll my Arate for this then? Yep. And that is 26. Six, I think. Okay. Two so if this is if Yay. this is successful, will that totally is it is it totally getting rid of the egg or is it transitioning no. the egg? It's one, one, point one point per one point. So per. I can take one of your points off and give myself one point of bashing. Mm. So you'll be down to three egg at that point. Okay. Yeah, but that but it's it's getting rid of that point of egg. It's not like Reducing I'm essentially it siphoning it from you yeah. and transmuting it into a much lower damage to myself. Okay. Okay, well, I'm now only minus one, so, you know, that's that's good. That's How much paradox do I get? <laughs> and uh, in terms of, like, healing kinds and stuff, um, especially when it comes to ag, it reduces your healing time every box. You kind of bring it back, so that is helpful. <laughs> yeah, because in uh, Old Wad, um, you're... Uh your health levels compress at higher levels. Like, if you beat someone with a bat a little bit, they heal faster than if you beat them a lot, because it's kind of like real life that way. Complications arise. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, Tegan, you do wake up from... Ow! Uh, 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 don't move. Uh, what is happening where are we am i you're gonna floating? feel hands on the side of your face tegan mm -hmm. don't move okay i've hurt a lot uh, well i'm not surprised oh. and abruptly you're gonna feel a needle pull out of your <laughs> probably you know what the side of your neck honestly the <sighs> quickest place to get it right into the main. Yeah. All right. Now that you're not connected, you would can you like? Move. Would you care for some some Vicodin? And she'll uh, press uh, on the spot yeah. to try and get it to stop bleeding yeah. clot quicker. Thank you. Um, and then you'll yeah. see the same Duh. move for her arm. Oh. Open. I'll just let it float think, across. Uh. All right. Two points. You're in a little better shape, but you're going to need to be careful. Yeah. Oh. Where are we? In... Uh, well, Space. I'm in a submarine full of corpses. Mm. Uh, now, excuse me, there's another life sign over there. Have you ever watched The Muppet Show? And she's going to push off of Tegan and start going towards <laughs> the door for the other room. Hey, Where's in uh, is it Spain. Heather okay? Uh, is she dead? No, everybody mm, else is. No. Mm. <laughs> no, she was the first awake. She's off trying to figure out how to get life support back on or we'll all be dead. Oh, um I I'm I'm good with computers and tech and that way. Mechan yeah, mechanics, I'll go swim over and try and find it. Go off in the direction yeah. that Sophia points and have them, um, like swim off. Tegan, once or you kind Tegan, of... Why? Yeah, once you start to kind of get moving and whatnot, the pain that you felt um, from the dimensional anomaly does kind of recede because your body is, you know, you, you don't feel pain normally. Um, yeah. So you know the damage is there but you are no longer feeling the pain. Mm. Oh, right. um, yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> um, the the moment in the moment you felt it, and then as you woke yeah. up, you're kind of like, oh, weird. What is that feel? I haven't felt that in forever. Uh, yeah. cool. <laughs> and then it just kind of started to dull, and 
so yeah you don't at least you don't feel the pain and therefore technically don't have the wound penalties i think because yeah i think that's a i'm, I'm rechecking the actual wording yeah. on that because yeah i do believe that that gives me i do believe i don't take that um hold yeah. on a second um but yeah you you head off towards uh towards the vents uh, well towards the um towards the vents because that's where sophia kind of points but you you also have been on this submarine for you know a while and have looked around some um mm-hmm. and so you you're like i'm not going through the vents because i am not small enough for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you kind of w- walk and you can hear heather like making noise um down one of the hallways so you can clink, clink, very clink, loud clink, clink. clanging and a, like a hammer like ricocheting or a wrench ricocheting off a wall and just like cursing yeah yeah I, I, I'm, I'm i'm coming to help don't throw anything at me noted <laughs> swims into the room fucking okay. just bang <laughs> I uh, need a hand. Yes. Trying to get that, that thing. Up. Fix that thing. Yeah. Okay. That, that thing. That's not All supposed right. to be doing that. Mm. And and Tegan, as you start to um, help Heather uh, with that, we'll make you do the the rolls in a bit. But mm. um, Sophia, you are searching out that other life's sign. Um, Nolan, are you doing anything in particular? Just kind of chilling. <laughs> Abruptly realizing you were left in a room full of corpses. Alone. <laughs> uh, in the dark. What else is in this room? Is it just... Um, so this is, this is kind of the, um, the entry point. So it's not, it's not a full room really it's kind of like a couple of hall- where a couple of hallways meet are there bulkheads um, here uh, yes okay i'm just gonna get a broom and gonna push all of the dead people into one room <laughs> if they're not already and then i'm going to shut it and leave a note on the door that says uh dead people storage do not okay. open yep <laughs> yep you you can definitely do that um there's a couple of of times where um as you're kind of pushing these these bodies some of them Push. much like the four of you have taken most of the damage internally aren't really showing a lot but some of them have looked like they've been um, uh, filleted with razor blades. Let's uh, put it that way. And there is just kind of blood like floating in the room, and a um, couple of drops, you know, get on your shirt. Oh, um, really? As you're kind of pushing these aboard pushing these dead bodies into this room uh and sophia you head out um kind of back towards there's you're heading towards uh where you know there's some um some of the bunk rooms and um you're searching for that life sign and you can see it behind one of the uh one of the doors to one of the bunk rooms and actually in the very silent atmosphere because um, there aren't really any machines running right now to you know block sound it's v- way quieter it's terrifyingly quiet yes. I can hear myself breathe you can hear yourself breathe it's kind of reassuring and then also terrifying um because all of a sudden when it's that quiet your breathing fills your ears and it feels like you can't hear anything else and your heart is just beating hard in your chest um and you can hear um you can hear crying 
uh, from the other side of the door. All right, good. That's not just in my own mind. Um, she's gonna try the handle. It's open. All right. I. She's gonna crack it and mm-hmm. call out. Are you on the other side of the door? So, someone else is alive. Um, no, I'm, I'm Currently, not. Currently, yes. Not in front of the door. All right, she's gonna shove it open. Yeah, you shove it open, and um, lying oh, on. She's gonna one do something weird about like yeah? wedging herself against the door to, and the door, the crack to try and shove it open with no actual resistance because of gravity. Right. So, yeah. Good. She's gonna be weirdly Good contorted off. trying to do that, and it's gonna hurt those two yeah. levels of egg, but it is, yeah. But you manage to, to shove it open and lying on um, one of the beds, kind of looking up at you with what looks like a mix of fear and hope in his eyes is Mateo. Um, and he's showing more of that damage on his outside. Um, and he just looks and goes, I... Oh god, thank god. Someone. Alright. She's gonna push off the wall and propel herself towards him and start trying to assess. Um, um, she still yeah. has life sight up. Cool. Um, this close, you can... And, and without the distraction of the other... Um, the other kind of life signs that were in the room closer to you, um, you can see now that Mateo's life sign is weak. Alright. I'll start assessing what wounds he has that I can see visible. Yeah. Figure out Um, some others. So I'll, I'll give you the numbers because um, I can describe it all I want and uh, this will at least let you know what you can fix. <laughs> and I figure... How, how much... Like, basically yeah. I think I'm going for what sort of sense I get that it's worth trying to save him. It is worth or trying if it's to save him. hopeless sort of thing. It is worth trying to save him. Probably right. about half of the damage is um, from the dimensional anomaly. Um, like the rest of you and then the other um, almost like if he takes any more damage he will die but you can save him because the rest like it's not all egg <laughs> alright then um well I suppose I We'll start doing some basic stuff to keep him everything on the inside where it's meant to be. And spend some quint and heal him. Cool. Um, if, if I need to, would... if he's got ag. I was going to say, he does have ag. Um, if you would like to just heal the lethal that's on him, that would help a lot and you wouldn't have to spend a quint. I will do that then. Cool. And save um, my sweet, sweet quint. Right? <laughs> you don't know where you're going to get more. <laughs> exactly. Yay. Um, it's a very finite resource at the moment. It is. Uh, to heal multiple points, like you could heal one lethal and he would at least be alive and stay alive and not be at risk of bleeding out kind of thing. Um, if you wanted to heal more than that, Um, you probably want to uh, state that before you roll in terms of power and whatnot. Um, Um, So you just kind of declare how many points you I will try to do more than one. Um, You can always try again after two, so if you don't want to like pick too high a number in case... Yeah, that might be good. As long as you get a success, you can keep going. (laughs) That's fair. Uh, yeah. I think I would prefer to do that just in case because it's a very small number of dice roll. Um, yeah. 
but I so do you want to go for like three. two try to heal two or three three let's start out with two and okay. see how we do on that yeah all right what is the difficulty for this uh for this that is uh i believe that's difficulty of five five all right now can i do willpower to add a die or does it lower willpower for an automatic success let's do that then yeah i will spend a willpower for that as the as one of the things i like about wad over uh, chronicles is that all right auto successes all Keep right well that watching. is an eight and a ten so i'm re-rolling okay. the ten Heck yeah, that's another 10. Nice. And a 7. So four successes plus automatic is five. Fantastic. Um, so he... Can I start slotting them into higher ones once I've healed the first two mm -hmm. I wanted to do? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to let you heal all of his lethal, basically. Um, okay. You have more successes than he has lethal so you can't unfortunately add that to ag but no. you know he feels real That's good fine. because his lethal's gone <laughs> um right. and uh yeah you uh, how are you I'm... doing this one are you basically doing blood transfusion type stuff again or i think this one is um basically she has like sets of capsules that she has in a small pouch that she keeps in a in her pocket that are emergency make this work now type thing specifically for healing um but yes i can i hadn't defined rotes yet so that's fair <laughs> they will be um, part of that because i'm sure i will have a healing rote that is my intent absolutely and um in terms and that of will rotes... be the way it's as a pharmacopoeist yes. it's like Maybe something that helps coagulate and anti-bleeding and like, yeah. Oh God, absolutely. speed speed scabbing sort of thing. Yeah, there are absolutely um, a lot of things you can do with uh, different pharmaceuticals and the like. Um, and in terms of rotes, um, your your rote only gives you a um, only reduces the difficulty when you're fast casting, which is like in the middle of combat. We had determined. Yeah. So it wouldn't have made a difference here anyway. Um, and you got more successes than he had damage in that you could heal. So, um, so yeah, it, he uh, gratefully accepts the medications that you give him, and um, just kind of holds your hand as um, you can tell, like his shoulders just relax as the pain reduces. Um, and you can tell that, especially through your life site, that um, that the uh, that the wounds are kind of knitting themselves together. Those those ones that um, you are able to heal. Um, and he just whispers, "Thank you," as he passes out from just stress and p pain and fear. And um, was you are, there yeah. a central area where it would make sense for us to uh, set up camp? Yeah, there's basically the mess hall. All right, um, is a pretty central area, and it has tables for like lying people down on if you need to. I think what she'll do. This looks like a bunk room, right? Yeah. All right, so she's gonna take a couple of the blankets and anything else she could use to kind of tie together to help sling him somewhere, like keep him from floating away all over the place. Uh, so she's going to take some of that and try to kind of just get him over her shoulders a little, because at least it's not going to be that heavy, and drag him through yeah, to the mess. Um, she's just going to try and mentally remember where his head is so that she doesn't just bang him into a door for him or something good call good call um yeah if you take your time with it i'm not gonna make you roll anything these are some narrow hallways but if you take your time you can definitely make sure 
he's not banging I, around. I figured there's probably because of the submarine, there's, it's not just going to be smooth hallways. It's going to be gear and like stuff and machinery. So she's just going to yeah. claw her way along. Cool, perfect. Um, yeah, and you manage to take him over towards the mess hall, and I think it's time for a break. <laughs> nice. Be right back. Welcome back. Uh, how's everyone doing? Woo! A little, so bit, little bit of great. talking to the... Good. Talking to the I have here. delicious snacks, so I'm Yay. great. Yay! Delicious snacks. I hear my dog barking outside. <laughs> I have popcorn. In a bag. Yay! Leg. You should get a bowl for that. Mm-hmm. I know, because I'm down to the nubbins now. There's like, I'm down to just like the last like... Fifth of the bag is just uh, little the pieces pour of into popcorn, your mouth. So I might get yeah. yeah, you should do that. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna go get That's a probably a good idea. Right I'm gonna mute myself though because this is very crunchy pastry. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Mm-hmm. Appreciate crunchy. that. Is it good? <laughs> good, good. It's like egg and tomato and basil and onion and bacon oh, nice. and rosemary. And it's delicious. That sounds really good. And now I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. That's fine. I mean, <laughs> probably should have grabbed some food. But, yeah. I'm like really craving those like fl- I don't know like I think they're Japanese, but they're like these little fluffy pancakes that have like oh. cream in the middle of them, and they're like you got like two like really like f- like small fluffy pancakes with like just so good. Are they, like, they're them. rolled up. No, it's not. It's like it's like they're just like little ones. Are they the jiggly ones or the whoa whoa whoa? Uh, jiggle 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 <laughs> jiggle jiggle. They're just little tiny pancakes. They're like yay big, and they're really okay. fluffy. You know what I, I want? I don't know. There's a place in Vancouver that has them. I'm I go want. Back and get them. See, I wish I could have coffee right now because I want mm. some goddamn a double espresso and some stroop waffles. Mm. Mm. You feel me? You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want it. I want it. I, I have a box of KD, but I I don't want to eat it. But I'm not gonna. Because I ate so bad this weekend. Yeah, I ate so good this weekend, which was bad. <laughs> like, I went to a place, I had pasta for lunch, and then we had, <laughs> like, little mini beignets that were, like, caramel sauce and, like, vanilla cream on it. And it was like, oh, Did you so finish good. the bottle of champagne they gave you last night? Um, I left the half of it for them to have. Because they were nice, and I didn't want to drip it down the drain. Okay. <laughs> drip it down the drain, pour it down the drain. <laughs> Sounds like a drip, 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 drip. <laughs> but you yeah, just, no, they it's don't. some sort of weird, like, decanting method? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you all about decanting. I've been reading Drops of God. Nice. There is a... Oof. So I was watching Super Eye Patch Wolf a while ago, and um, this is this YouTuber I really like. He talk, talks about anime and pro wrestling in equal measures. And he was talking about, like, battle manga. Like, Hunter Hunter and, like, you know, any one of the ones where it's like, I have to get stronger to do this, you know, those type of anime. And how the best manga version of that he'd ever read was this one called Drops of God, which is a wine-tasting manga about this person who has to, like, come into the wine world and, like, find their footing. It's free if you have an Amazon Prime subscription. Like, on their on their it's Comixology great. app. It's, uh... Interesting. It's, it's what great. if Naruto was about drinking wine, basically. Yeah, Traz, if you're not watching Super Eye Patch Wolf, get out of the chat. <laughs> this is a, this is an Eye Patch Wolf channel now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, I guess I'm out. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I gotta go too. Oh man. Um, but I just we're, we're talking about food, and that just reminded me that we're in February now, which means that the bin for cheesecake has changed. Oh, dangerous. To yeah, what? it looks like it's a strawberry cheesecake this time. I'm just like, mm, what? That looks so yummy. For my birthday, it's strawberry. We might I have was, to go to bin for after all. I was gonna say. I was gonna suggest. I'm like, well, if you're looking for that. Oh. 
All right, fine. Well, forget <laughs> I need to call and reserve for that. Now I need to like check All the right, lot one specials. One sec, I need to go check the pass to place. Which one? Lot one or whatever? Yeah, they've got a really, really good tiramisu, which I love, but I'm just seeing if they got any fun specials. Nice. Oh, they've got the Dine Around Victoria again. Oh, whoa, wait, I think that's... Oh, it ends today. Crap. Oh, yeah. no. So, <laughs> anyway, so good. Folks, how y'all doing? How y'all doing, folks? Yeah. You having a good time tonight? You having a good time? Hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and we're here to talk about having a good time here on Dark Tales. Oh, my God, I'm my next character is going to be voiced by Mark Wahlberg. I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time causing trauma. Trauma. Emotional damage. <laughs> right? Emotional damage. Yeah. <sighs> but, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I figured out. So, for those unaware, um, I can't have gluten, dairy, or eggs, and yet I have figured out how to make a fried bread that I can actually eat, and that tastes delicious. Really? That sounds like a win. Is it like, is it like bannock that you can make? Essentially, yeah. It's, oh, it's, it, huh. All it is is this. It, it's specifically a gluten-free uh, gluten flour mix that I have to make from different flours, which is a pain in the ass, let me tell you. But it is so worth it. <laughs> Because all all this recipe is is um, like some egg replacer because I can't have eggs, um, and then this flour mix, and then water, and like some salt, and then you just fry it in oil, and it's nice, so good, so good. You try to come up for my birthday. If you loved me, you'd come up for my birthday. Um, oof, oof, oof. If you love me, you'd come up for my birthday and give me the cuddles. Oof, the guilt. The guilt. The guilt for weaponizing that. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, it's okay. Traz. Uh, We're millennials. That's that's just cruel. Yeah, that was that was the stuff with the um, some of the stuff about the baby shower last night was like, like some of the suggestions were like, oh, well, we can do this, and I'm like, that costs money. We're broke. Like we're all broke. <laughs> I appreciate the sentiment, but we're broke. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I got I got uh, retroactive pay from my uh, union uh, collective agreement being renewed so late. Um, it was like renewed in October. It was supposed to be done in April and we just got the retroactive pay like up until December when they finally gave us our pay raises. Um, it's a whole thing. Anyway, um, my gross income was like $2,000 more than my net income because of taxes. <laughs> Oh, time to put it hurt. To use all the cheats. You just need to stream on your own channel so you get more tax write offs. <laughs> right. Yeah, I actually may. Oh, right. I have to remember to do that for my taxes this year. Yeah, you money definitely do. Write off everything. Um, also, did, everything. did you. Quick, quick question, Robin. I know this is. Some, mm. I shouldn't give tax advice on the air as a non tax <laughs> professional. Did you write off any of your Dorktails equipment last year? Yeah, I wrote off my laptop. I'm a monitor okay. and a mic. Okay, cool. I was going to say, year. if you didn't, then you could write it all off this year because you have, um, you can do stuff that, so if there's stuff that you did not write off last year, um, then you can still write it off at a later year. Kind oh, of. Yep. Oh, sort it's of. Basically, there's some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Je Jen can send you some articles on it. It's uh... As the person who helps dork tales do their taxes uh even though i'm not a tax professional i just do a lot of research <laughs> no you're just a rules lawyer and that's what tax is well really is honestly so um i know we gotta hop back into game in a sec but i found yep. a couple i was cleaning out my closet i'm sorry mama um and i found something that's left over from the changeling larp oh no it's the mouth what? tattoo oh right you showed me that's terrifying I never got to use this because I wasn't willing to shave for it, but it's a temporary tattoo to give yourself oh, yeah. giant teeth smiles. Oh, Can you picture oh, this on Christine's that. face? <laughs> like, I feel like someone... it would just take up her Can entire you... face. I wouldn't yeah, risk a... putting that on, though. Because what if it's shitty and ends up dyeing your skin a little or something? It doesn't come off. It's, it is Don't shitty, want it on my but... face. 
I, it's just like a temporary tattoo, so it would come off pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. You never know. It's true. Sometimes they stay. And you have to go into like a workplace and, and see people. Whereas and be a I supervisor. Don't. Do it, Aiden. Yeah. Do it. Do it, I mean, Aiden. Like, <laughs> be one of the responsible higher ups of the office. I, I, it's, there I are mean, two of them. If you just if you just time it so that it's around Halloween, at least you'd have another excuse. <laughs> just yeah. like, I made a mistake. Um, but, you know, it's a normal person mistake. <laughs> I fucked up. Well, I mean, they already know <laughs> yeah. that I like paint myself green on a weekly basis and whatnot. Because I do talk mm. about all that with them. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> but I think it would still be weird if I came in for for all the students that I deal with and whatnot. Yeah, it's and not just faculty. your immediate co um, coworkers; well, it's public facing. <laughs> and see, that's why you have it like kind of around Halloween, so that at least they can be like, "Ah, Halloween was just happened." Like maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking of like work stuff i uh i always have meetings with my green screen up because i don't remove it or anything and so i keep getting people being like what do you like is that green screen and i'm like yes let me tell you about dork tales <laughs> oh for the, the the people that i i saw this weekend literally they're they they were so impressed by my camera quality and my mic quality and they're like why do you have a green screen i'm like so along with all like the complications of me potentially relocating. I also do this part time in the evenings, basically, with my <laughs> with my friends. Um, they're like, "That's really cool." So I'm like, "Cool." My employers actually think this is cool, or potential See, future employers. <laughs> I talk about it in the sense of extra life on a regular basis. So like, yeah, that's if a good, people that's ever ask cheap. me what I'm doing in the evening, I tell them all about our streaming and how we do it as like multiple charity events throughout the year as well on top of it and if they continue the conversation then i'll bring out oh well last year we raised like 20 something thousand dollars 22 mm -hmm. 25 canadian something like that yeah i think we had 25k canadian and whatnot and people always yeah. go really um i went into a <laughs> um uh a, a fabric store that's where i went i went into a fabric store and was wearing the extra life shirt and somebody was like extra life i was like yep <laughs> nice and then we had a nice little discussion but um anyway uh let's get back into game so that we're not yeah. here forever tonight and we've got a forever nice forever mage um forever was, mage. There, was there anything there i was gonna say like if there are any announcements that we have um, but mm. I think this game is the biggest announcement aside from, uh, just, just, can I, I'm going to say one quick fun thing before we hop back in. And that is mm -hmm. to, uh, yesterday I submitted the commission for the new, uh, homebrew game. That's going to be replacing Spelljammer in April, um, Ooh. which is, uh, Arcos, the, uh, a, a homebrew, uh, Elos game that's set in a kind of a Greco, um, greco island culture that's going to delve deep into the feywild as well it's going to be very interesting and very very crazy and jen i need some ideas using our combined greek and roman degrees yep um cool. into what actually can show up there because i've been kind of panic world building and i could use your help sure yeah if you need any uh, on an island. alcohol if you need any alcohol stuff i know a lot about <laughs> greek wine <laughs> uh yeah every greek, greek alcohol times. that you can do it because unlike normal oh. greece this is a lot of islands and i know yep. that will affect like soil aridity and and things like that Metaxa, there's like a greek one i don't know it's like one Which hard one? liquor that metaxa um, it's like a there's brandy a, almost. Yeah, there, there's a really weird one that is... 40% um, alcohol, and I, I love yeah, mixing it with There's with one that's a tree. Ale. It basically tastes like pine. It's not pine, mm -hmm. but there's basically like a green, oh, that's green cool. alcohol. It's really it's cool. Like, I've had it. It's um, gross. It's gross, so just, but I love it. Uh, quick fun fact. Um, I, don't, I don't drink, but the only beer I have ever enjoyed in my entire life was the second most popular beer in greece in like 2007 um that is it <laughs> nice and they don't export that so, <laughs> so i yeah. can never have it again so in march i'll probably have a build night for all of you where you can all join me and stuff um because uh robin and i have already worked together on mapping out the island chain nice and trade job. routes and the leagues and things like that so jen i would love to get you in on some of this creation later when you're not cool. running mage yeah. which i'll let you get back to Right. Cool. 
Tegan. Before you wake up on uh, what I've now been calling death sub, but that's beside the point. <laughs> huh. Um, huh. Before you wake up, uh, you have the memory of um, shortly after your promotion, uh, because you are now tier three instead of tier two. So you are kind of in the manager supervisor uh, range of the technocracy or at least the iteration X. Um, and shortly after that, after you were granted this, um, you have a meeting with a, uh, a higher level iteration X member. Uh, her name is Nell, N-E-L-L. Um, and she has asked you to meet outside of these two very large doors that um, you can just tell have both high tech and low tech security measures on it. So there's like the the fingerprint scanner, the the like retina um, scanner, and as well as like three deadbolts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, she's this um, older Asian woman who uh, has a prosthetic arm and um she has a dei as well so um one of one of her eyes is also golden um and she's also got uh an implant coming out of her ear um that you're not entirely sure what it does but um you've seen a few people it's fairly standard um you're just not sure exactly what hers does um and as you approach kind of coming down this hallway she smiles and, and says, Ah, Tegan, uh, congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. Uh, I would say I was surprised, but I've been putting that in and did a ton of work on it, so I'm glad they glad they saw my value. Absolutely. Um, you have put in a lot of work and you are being talked about by the people who matter. Um, you show a lot of initiative and dedication to your craft, to our craft. <laughs> and it's being noticed. And I wanted you to know that. Thank you. Um, it's reassuring. I'm glad. Do you know what's behind these doors? Um, you don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, no. The greatest accomplishment and the greatest failure of Iteration X is back here. This is where we keep all of the research on hit marks. I can see you know what that means. I've heard. I've heard done digging. I, I, I grew up watching the Terminator like all the time. It's kind of was Robocop. All, you know, I was that that kid. Of course. Well, you have earned our trust, and I say our, the upper echelon of Iteration X, you've earned our trust, and we wanted to give you a project of your own to work on. Strictly need to know but you can build a small team if you wish. And it might have to do with what's behind those doors. But first I need to know if you want to know, if you want this. Y 
Yeah, if you, if I was a normal person and I had a, my resume and they have a section for career goals, I think that would be the, the, the goal. I want to know. Good. And uh, out of the uh, kind of shadows to one side, um, another gentleman, or a gentleman steps out um, from the shadows and he's holding a key and Nell pulls out a key as well. Um, and the two of them uh, do a kind of double key open um, on the door. And it seems to override most of the, the high tech stuff. Um, and uh, and then Nell just kind of finishes with the deadbolts. Um, and she goes, <laughs> you'll be given a key for those and entered into the system for the rest. But let's talk about your future in the Iteration X. And she'll take you inside and uh, you will have a discussion there. <laughs> there is one caveat that she gives you, however. And it's the request that you go on this mission to um, the deep sea exploration zone specifically to reclaim the data that is down there uh, mostly from iteration x but they'll take whatever you can get um, especially if the base has been compromised or destroyed um, if you can get it they want it um, none of what she has just talked about is contingent upon the successful recovery. So if it is absolutely impossible, that won't affect your standing here. Um, but it is uh, very important that they get that information back. And so when the sub docks at the base and the rest of the, um, the team heading out goes to the bridge, you head down towards the lab with a couple of the other uh, crewmates on the sub to go with you. They have other duties down there as well. Um, and this, uh, this scientist guides you down towards the lab. And you get down there. There's several scientists in lab coats kind of moving around. There's a couple of computer banks set up. Um, and then there's at least one member of uh, Iteration X that you um, that you clock just from, uh, you can record, like your DEI is just mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> ah, yes. One of us, yes. Yes, exactly. Um, and the, uh, the scientist just kind of goes, uh, we haven't had time to um, to put it onto any sort of external hard drive or whatever, so you might have to take a moment and 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 do that. I'm, I apologize. We've just been rather busy down here. No, it's all right. I uh, <clears throat> I've got I've got a way to get the data. When you're gonna see her, um, she's going to reach for her cybernetic eye she's gonna uh like basically like do a weird pattern on her on her eyelid closed and you're gonna hear like a a a smooth kind of like sound of like like a metal moving against something and then just like she'll pop out her eye this thing absorbs data pretty well He'll look like it's that kind of disturbed, like flicker over his face of I I should be used to this and I am kind of used to it, but it gets me every time. <laughs> 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 and he'll just kind of nod and go, of course. And uh, if you'll excuse me, please. Um, and just kind of motion at the computers and um, uh, the other two crew members who have followed you down uh they follow him and it's it's mateo and jordan um and 
Mateo kind of stops and just like looks at you and goes, like, that's really cool, but also really creepy. Um, I'm gonna yeah. go. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, 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 that's usually the response. I remember the first time I had to do it on myself, and that was weird. Let me tell you. You seem like a great yeah. person, but yeah, that's weird. That's understandable. Okay. And he goes off, and, and they're collecting um, uh, some boxes that uh, you're not really sure what's in them, but they don't look particularly heavy. They're just, there's a few boxes that they have to take back to the sub, and they start doing that. Um, and you connect your cybernetic eye to the computer. <laughs> yep. And it takes a moment. It does the whole, like, plug-and-play thing where, you know, it, it recognizes it, but it takes a second for it to get yep. the drivers, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, fuck. I, oh, I didn't have an... Uh, there's an update. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a, um... There's a folder on the desktop is like completely clear on the computer except for a single folder um that just says um uh just says iteration x on it and she will all you can yeah all you can really tell is that that's what you're supposed to take so you just transfer that um and you hear <laughs> In the back of your mind, as uh, Nolan has set up this mind link, um, you hear the like, uh, guys, this is getting really weird and suspicious and um, creepy. Um... <laughs> you through the mind link back, they will all hear, I'll just be a second. <laughs> and then just a slight laugh to herself. Right, Sophia's no. just gonna side eye like roughly where she thinks like Tegan is and just be like, what the fuck? And as as kind of you hear the bits of this song come through, um, you also get an image just as your cybernetic eye is um finishing the the uh download from the computer, um you hear Captain Gamble's voice. Um, and you're not sure if you're hearing it through the mind link or if you're hearing it down the hall because it is loud. <laughs> mm. um, about how she's his, uh, uh, she's his wife and she should look at him. And then you hear um, mostly through the mind link as shit uh, goes to hell. <laughs> As you grab your eye, <laughs> pop it in, r book it down, and then just go, what's going on? I'm on my way. <laughs> um, Jordan and Mateo uh, are seem to be grabbing the last of the boxes as they were like, they were heading down the hall just before you mm -hmm. come down, and so you're running down. They're like, what's going on? Get to the sub. Shit's going down. Of course, and they'll they'll take off running, as, holding onto the boxes as best they can. Um, and you meet up with the others um, as uh, you know Heather is is constructing something to explode as <laughs> as you're leaving. Um, and there's just there's chaos, and Captain Gamble is running for the sub, uh, making sure like everybody else is going, but you. Like you're all just booking it, and you've you've had the um, the insight of uh, of Threatnal and what Nolan mm. has told you about how this is terrible, and um, if the entire base is infected, the best thing to do is to blow it up, which Heather seems to be planning to do. <laughs> yeah. So then Tegan will be like the cap. Okay, everyone out. I'll s seal the door keep that explosion try and slow them down yeah and uh, you seal the door and you get back to or you get on the sub and the sub um, you you watch as um, as Sophia like picks up this cat that seems to have been walking around and just kind of like 
chucks it back into the base because it seemed to be on the sub. She was just like, nope. <laughs> yep. Not on my watch. Uh, and then she she reminded us all that she is the flop monster. Which she's like, ah! That's her nature, actually. Nature. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, it's not a flaw. Right. It is who I am internally. Right. Yeah, not who I person. present to you, mm-hmm. but it is who I intrinsically am in t- yeah. inside. Yes. Yep. yep. Um, so, yeah, as you're kind of making your way onto the sub, you watch her drop kick this cat and you just get on the sub, close the door, and the sub starts to leave. Um, and you remember much of what happened next because that was the most pain you felt since your surgery since your since the attack and you woke up here and now you're off trying to help heather (laughs) and as as you kind of make it make into into the room you realize that um your cybernetic eye is kind of glitching a little. Um, just maybe you didn't see it quite correctly. Mm. Um, but um, you kind of blink a few times and whatever it was seems to work itself out. Um, but you are getting this information now coming in through it that's like, oh, yeah, there's there's no life support, um, and oxygen is running out fairly quickly. Um, not as fast as if everyone on the submarine was still alive, but faster than you'd like. <laughs> um, and there's uh, you're just you can also sense um, that the because you had accessed like the internet and um some of the submarine systems uh through your technology um like navigation's not on um general steering isn't on um and you're getting uh do you have um do you have prime i can't remember um no i swapped out Prime. I, I'd moved my. I, I had Prime at the initial extra life, and then after I adjusted my character, I uh, I'm at Data Three, Force Two, Matter Two right now. Cool, cool. Um, so yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you can tell that these systems aren't on. Um, and you can kind of get the sense that, um. Well, obviously the the uh, there's no there's no gravity. Everything's kind of just floating motionless wherever you are. Mm-hmm. You assume space somewhere, but don't know where exactly. So, but you're you're kind of suspended, um, and yeah, you walk into the the room with Heather. Um, your eyes back to working again, so. Um, Heather's just like, fix that, fix that thing. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, and uh, let's let's get some of this tech back online with both of you. Um, we are going to say, let's see. Yeah, but how much pain Heather's in right now? It's like, yep. Um. Intelligence and technology. Um, and let's see. I saw her specialties. Oh, it's loading. Um, uh, Tegan, what I, are your specialties? Um, I have a uh, modification for technology on, so I don't think that necessarily applies. No. Um, I think you actually both have that, which is great. Uh, <laughs> Useful. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, Heather, I'll let you have creative, though. Okay. But yeah, int and technology. Mm-hmm. Difficult. <laughs> I have my nice. yeah. Um, let's see. I'm gonna spend a willpower. Yeah, Heather, what are you working on? You're working on life support specifically, or are you both working on life support? Like, what have you directed working... Deacon to do? Um, I think I was working specifically on life support and whatever critical systems for, like, motion or, like, figuring out defenses like whatever is 
yeah, like okay. integrity of the of the actual vessel. Cool. Yeah. Um, get like and... systems running and like energy lights and all that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Heather, you have mechanical aptitude, right? Mm -hmm. And that reduces your difficulty by two, correct? Okay. Yes. Uh, I believe so. Um, so your difficulty is going to be four. Okay. And Tegan, I don't think you have anything that reduces difficulty. No, I, I well, I have computer aptitude, which I forget. I, okay. I forgot um, to re review my my parents and flaws, actually, which they actually do. <laughs> I might actually have that uh, written down. So give me one sec. Yeah. I'm uh, to find computer-based good. roles uh, reduce all difficulties involving computer-based roles by uh, minus two, up to the usual modifier limit. Um, so yeah, uh, you'll also get a minus two on this because of specifically nice. what you're you're doing. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna call that uh, difficulty of five. Cool. Okay. And I said I was spending a willpower for that one yes. automatic success. All right, that is three successes. Four. Awesome. Um, nice. Yeah, so Heather, um, you're almost there. If you get, you know, just a little bit more work and you'll be able to get the life support systems up and running um, and you'll be able to get fresh air, which is <laughs> the important thing. Be easier if yeah. not being stabbed in the cells. Yep, yep. Um, and uh, Tegan, um, you kind of get on the computer and you manage to get it back on, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and you manage to get the uh, light system where you are kind of working. It's it's uh, a bit of a split system, so um, mm. you haven't gotten lights on everywhere, but you have got them on in your room. Yep. Um, and you've uh, found a. Actually, give me uh, give me a perception and alertness as well. Um, cool difficulty of six. Okay. Just you, not Heather. Oh, my dice are chaotic as fuck today. Um, <coughs> rolling ones and tens all over the place. Uh, that's gonna be only one success for perception. Ooh, that's enough. Um, you, uh, as you're kind of scooting around the system um, trying to find things you find a system that is not currently online uh, but that is working um, called artificial gravity oh which you clock as being a bit weird for a submarine to have yeah huh what? but you could turn it on if you want yeah like Everybody suddenly hits the floor. How <laughs> motherfuck did oh. you do? Um, as Heather's four egg slams into the ground oh. and take a point of bashing each. Uh, you, oh, can, you can try to God. soak. So I will try to soak it. Soak. I, I'm gonna. Yeah, I would try. Also like to soak it. So that's two sorry. successes of difficulty eight. Cool. Do I get lose dice for doing a soak roll with damage, no. or is it just no? Okay. Okay. Does my armor count towards that? So yes, yes, your armor will will absorb it. You'll you'll Excellent. feel the bashing, but it won't register on your body. Feel the burn. Excellent. Two successes. Cool. So yeah, none of you take the bashing. You're good. <laughs> Emma, sorry, able... I found the gravity button. Also, Emma, it's weird that the ship help? has a gravity button. I mean, what, what did you expect? Did not to have a gravity button? I mean, Wait, this is a submarine. That makes more sense, yeah. actually. Yeah, that's Her. yeah, exactly, Doc. And what does Sophia want to do? How is my patient, <laughs> who I've been dragging to the mess hall on my back? Um, fine. Okay. You managed good. to. Um, it's not a. It's not a lot of damage, but I'm not even going to make him take it. Um, you managed to just. Um, you have enough physicals to like you can feel the weight of them now but <laughs> um but you have like made your body between him and 
any damage. So it's why you still feel the bashing <laughs> because it's suddenly the weight right. as well. Well, I suppose I have to five and carry him now. Yeah. I have strength three, so I think I can do it. You can manage it. Um, he's young and like fairly lean, and you're most of the way to the mess hall by the time this happens. So you really only have to go like the last 20, 30 feet. And while I'm doing that, getting him into position, I'm just going to be muttering under, under my breath about, bless a sweet little heart. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think after that, Heather's going to clamber back up and get back to working on it. And is then going to, but is going to mention just offhand, like, can you get like the PA system working or intercoms? Um, you found yeah. those as you were scrolling through, so you could turn them on if you yeah. wanted. Yeah. They're not damaged either. Boop. All right. Uh, testing, testing. This is, uh, this is subspace... <laughs> subspace, that's also a thing. Uh, this is sub in space. This is your biomechanic speaking. We're getting the systems back online. Hopefully. I found the button for the PA and the artificial gravity. Again, I apologize for any uh, abrupt return to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. I think Heather's gonna throw a oh, wrench humanity! At <laughs> throws a wrench in that general direction. I'm not trying to actually hit, but like, just like... <laughs> I won't make either of you roll, so... <laughs> you throw it, it's a terrible throw, but you can still dodge it, so... Yeah. You're not expecting right, there to be gravity I'm, again? Shit, can you hand that back? I need that for this part. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, actually, I Heather throws that. it, and it's heavier than she expects in the actual gravity, and it just makes it halfway and goes clunk. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve I that. I'm used to that. Ow! That hurt. Right, Throwing let's hurts. Let's try and get some more of these systems back online. Clickety, 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 clickety sounds. Um, Heather, if you give me one more uh, of the same rolls um, to get mm -hmm. life support back up. Um, and Tegan, is there anything in particular you want to try and get, get running? Or anything you want to look for? Um... Yeah, I want to do hunting for some more weird systems, because they had anti-gravity, so what else were they expecting the sub to do? Okay. Um, Heather, you absolutely get life support back online, and you start to hear the hissing of... Um, because it's been so silent, the, the hissing is very loud of just air entering the cabin again. <laughs> oh, And it just... It tastes Sweet so sweet. <laughs> tastes like dead bodies. <laughs> yeah. There's that must in there. I hate that. Mm -mm. Yeah, um, Tegan, give mm -hmm. me since you're actively searching, um I'm gonna say Give me intelligence and computer. Oh, yeah. Because I was going to give you investigation, but um, computers also works, so. Yes, and I have. Once again, I forgot to buy a dart in investigation. Darcy <laughs> made this fatal flaw as well. Um, what is my difficulty? Um, tell me what you get. All right. Um, I got... I got a 10, which is nice. Okay. Um, but then I got two fives, two threes, and a one. So. Okay, cool. Um, so. You managed to find a. Um, you managed to find two things. One is a. Uh, I wanted to say button. It's not really a button, but it's like a bit of code that has been um, like redacted out of the code that it was a, a part of. So like mm. it's mm -hmm. been made inert, that section, yeah. a specific yeah. section. And you look at it and you go, 
does this thing have windows? And so you can, like, put that code yeah. back in active again. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> and then there basically is a button that um, will let you open the windows, should you choose. <laughs> Not, like, open, open, but, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, open... Appear. Like, like, Make them appear. appear. Well, when you were like... saying that, I wasn't sure if you meant, like, in comparison to, like, Linux. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I was like, what, I, what are we you... operating here? What, what there, you, there's what? a moment. There's a moment when Tegan's just like, "Is that what windows yeah. does that mean?" <laughs> yeah. And you windows. read it through a couple times. You're like, "Ah, actual windows, uh, like glass actual windows, windows, like huh. Windows 98. Ah, the most stable. How are there yeah. glass windows on this thing? All um, right. Click the windows, like dung comes on. Um. <laughs> So I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. Ooh. Um, and the second thing you find is um, that somewhere kind of in the center of this sub ship, you're not sure what it is now, this device you're traveling in, um, is something you're not sure what exactly it is, but it's definitely some sort of energy source that is not connected to anything else. And all you found is kind of a reference to it. Huh. Um, so it's not something you can turn on from here or anything, but it is mm -hmm. logged in the computer. Huh. And I'm gonna leave you with that. <laughs> <laughs> those thoughts um, mm -hmm. and uh, Nolan you're sweeping up some dead bodies and when you close the door and uh, yeah. you kind of turn away from it um, you're just you know whatever's oh. going through your mind is going through your mind and then the gravity hits, and you hear all of the bodies hit the floor in what? the room that you just closed. <laughs> and then the PA system comes on, and there's an apology. <laughs> That's not much of an apology, but okay, sure, sure. We're good, we're good, we're good. And... We're good. Um, and then you can kind of hear the, the hissing of air and it, it starts to get a little bit easier to breathe oh. you're not feeling that tightness in your chest anymore that panic attack coming back um, <laughs> and as you kind of close your eyes to take a moment you open them and the wall in front of you is starting to come apart. And you're looking into the blackest space you have ever seen. Oh. That's not good. Oh, crap. Uh, do, is there any tape anywhere? Uh... Uh... Shit. And this was not what you expected when you joined the Void Engineers. <laughs> you you knew many of them went into space. Many of them went into weird places that previously had not been traveled. But that wasn't you. I'm a, I'm you were a... at the Descartes Institute for Mental Health. That's where you belong. Okay. And you remember... Shortly after your transfer, which was a while ago now, um, you had a meeting with um, Dr. Beta. Um, that that you know, lovely black woman who's about your age, um, who, when you first meet her as you walk into this room, she kind of catches you with her piercing gaze, and nods she knows why you're here she invited you 
And be- without any preamble, she just asks, Why did you request this transfer, Dr. Muscroft? Hmm. Um, well, I... I, I, I don't want to... I can't do it anymore. I, um... I can't... I don't... I can't break people anymore. It's, um... Um, I, I'm not fit to serve in the field anymore. She'll nod, get a little sad smile on her face. I, I am compromised and I feel that the only way that I would be of any use would be to be, um, spend too much time in the white room. Well, her her gaze goes from this, like, piercing, suspicious look to a lot softer, kinder. She goes, I know you've been having a hard time recently, and we want you to succeed here. Okay? Do you? I do. Okay. (laughs) Others may not. And it would be foolish to not acknowledge that. Fair. Yeah, there was a lot of... uh, resistance to my application. (laughs) There was. I'm not here to spy on you. Not that it matters. Not that you have to believe me or that you probably believe me anyway or that you even know if I believe me. But I'm not. Honestly, I'd like to see you try. But it's good to know. You did a good job when I came in. You didn't shake hands. I could have planted at least two bugs on you just then. But I'm I'm detecting, uh, I'm getting the sense that you have, um, you have a low-grade EMP pulse through the room about every seven and a half seconds or so. Just a real small one. <laughs> It must be hard to give <laughs> to give psychotherapy to uh, uh, some of the more robotic members with that going. But maybe you disable it. Maybe you frequency it out so it doesn't disrupt any DEIs or any other implants. I can feel it. I, I have a filling that kind of picks it up. Right. Old silver amalgam. It does that. See? It's true. I don't have to trust you necessarily to expect good things from you. And as the one who supported your application, One of the ones, but mm, the loudest voice. I am responsible for your success now. And I would like you to succeed. That makes two of us. So, I want you to trust me, if you can. It will take some time, I'm sure. We. We specialize in 
recognizing that stuff takes time. Look, um, Dr. Bang, I'm... Veda? Was it? Veda's fine. I already trust you. I'm a pretty easy trust. I'm not a particularly good spy. <laughs> well, better for me then. Besides, if you trust people, they trust you back. So. Um, That's what I'll, I found. I'll trust you if you trust me, but, um. What do you need from me? Where do we start? We start with you finding your place here. That's, I can't tell you where that is necessarily. But I will help you find it. So do I start in the mail room and work my way out? Or... Okay. No. I need someone with your... I don't want to call it expertise. That seems gauche. Your experience of Horrors. the NWO. I don't need knowledge that they probably haven't left you with. Are you, doctor, are you asking if you can do a forensic analysis of the, my brain damage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, go for it. That sounds like fun. I mean, what did Churchill hey. say? If you're going through hell, keep going. And I've got plenty of hell between my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another time, but yeah. we have yeah. many agents, NWO and otherwise, who come through here and not all of those who, who choose the Void Engineers in the first place truly understand. I'm in. Good. Your office is um, down the hall. My office. Do you have a question? No, I just wanted to say that um, Michaela spoke very highly of you. That's why I'm trusting you. And that's why I'm trusting you. Because she spoke very highly of you as well. For an NWO agent. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, she had to. Is not the vows. <laughs> Gotta sneak those in. Oh, yeah. Red tape was just up to here. <laughs> um, down the hall? Down the He's hall? He's telling me it's, it's not 101. It's not one. Okay. It's not 101. We don't have a 101 here. To that. Um, casual Friday? Is that a thing? Or you'll find in the Void Engineers that every day can be Casual Friday if you want it to be. <laughs> Though it does tend to build, you know, trust with other conventions if. During those meetings, you at least wear a suit of some sort. But yeah. depends what image you want to project. Yeah, ain't that the trick? Um, that's fair. I'm pretty used to wearing a suit. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Well, um, thanks, Doctor Bingham. Veda. She'll, as you kind of turn to leave, she'll like lower her head to whatever paperwork she's working on and just say, 
Be seeing you, Nolan. Missed it by that much. <laughs> While we're doing spy quotes. And you'll just walk out. Mm -hmm. um, as you leave the meeting, um, your uh, your phone pings with um, with an email. Um, it's from Credence, and uh, it's uh, it's an encrypted file. What? Boop, boop. Boop, you open it. And decrypt it, and uh, it's a it's a URL that you're familiar with. It opens a chat program. Sup? You get a message back that just says, "I heard about Mick. I'm sorry." Battery low. Uh. I'll catch you later. And just stay like, bye. Go into go into his office. Probably yeah, just like it's a, a tiny, tiny office, but it's something. It's a room with a door you can close, and it's like, it's uh, you're on like the third floor, so it's uh, you know three oh six. What are the walls made of? Um, I think in this building, uh, it's very much just standard drywall. Like think, think standard office building rather than void engineer type office building. Sounds good. Um, so in that case, he's gonna drop his uh, what two thousand and twelve iPhone or Samsung on the floor. Yeah. Yep. And just stomp it into oblivion <laughs> because the walls aren't going to be able to take a throw. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. You would put a hole right through that <laughs> unless you hit a. Well, you'd still probably dent it if you hit a. And then when the, when the phone is just glass and computer chips, he's going to pick <laughs> out the SIM card. He's going to pick out the uh, the hard drive and he's just going to yep. very daintily sweep it all into like the dustbin. Cool. Yep. Um, uh, Memo. Get a new phone. <laughs> You'll actually um, get because there's uh, there's a computer in here as well. So if you like log on or anything, um, at some point there'll there'll just be like an email from Veda that um, that says. Uh, uh, like equipment requisition. <laughs> She's already in my head. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let the healing begin. <laughs> and with that, you are back staring into the blank voidness of space. <laughs> ah, balls. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, Dr. Westcroft, it's time to engineer the void. Where is the frickin' duct tape? Um, uh, 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 hey, hello? We've got a, a hole to nothing in here. Or, I mean, logically it's a hole to something, but I'm not seeing any of that something right now. How much is this echoing through the hall? Yeah. Like, are we able to just, like, hear, like, a mumble, like... Um... You, you maybe can't pick out all the words, but somebody is definitely yelling and that somebody is Nolan. Do you want to... You know what? Um, I, I got this. Heather's going to go okay. over to the, PA, the intercom system and be like, uh, please report to the engineering room. Big hole! <laughs> Are please you being... elaborate? <laughs> Three meter wide, three point five meter, what four meter wide? Lar 
Is it There's a hole. things out and is yeah, there I, something rushing in? I mean, I'm not getting sucked at the moment. Am I getting sucked at the moment? Nope. I, I found a, fine. I found a button to open windows. I Might be that. No, this is a wall opening. <clears throat> That's a hell of a window. Um, I could, I, I'm gonna leave. It, uh, I just thought you would like, I thought you would like to know that there is a giant hole in the side of the submarine. It might be bad for the air. Although it appears to be fine. Like, I'm not going to... Why don't you touch it? Knock on okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to touch it. <laughs> it's glass. Cool glass. Um, you can tell that it's, like, not your standard uh, house window glass. Um, there is definitely something enforced about it, you know, to keep the space outside. I have a feeling Heather's just holding down the PA button, so anything that we're saying just, now just... is being heard by everybody. Yeah. Uh, makes, makes kind of a glassy sound, but it's a lot denser than you'd expect. Up, update report appears to be a window to nothing. Uh huh. I that, as I as I <clears throat> had said, I found a button for a window. Actually, well, yeah, I found code that had been redacted and taken out, so I just input the code back in, and boom, we got Windows, baby. None of that Mac or Linux shit. Well, wonders never cease. I, I'm sorry. I'm just a, I'm just a bumpkin from <clears throat> from from the Void Engineers. I, this this high fangled new iteration X technology is just beyond me. I'm sorry. I don't think it's it X. I don't know if we made the sub. We might have made the sub, but also this sub was not I don't meant think it's for a sub. sub. This is a ship now, I think. So it's a dom. Sure. Sure, Doc. Oh. It's a... Uh, un a traversing domicile. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry for interrupting your, your busy work with my inability to articulate knowledge about windows. I'm just glad it was a window and you didn't get sucked into the void of space. Yeah. How would that make you feel? Concerned. All right, good. Um, We're still... would probably be a, a problem. All right, both are valid responses. Your mental health is still going good. Well, I'm not sad. I'm just in so much pain. Ow! Oh, the, oh, I, uh, the doc has some stuff if you want to go see him. Where, I, I'll come to you, actually. I make house calls. Where are you? Engineering. Engineering. Good. Um, I have to swing by my bunk to grab some more. Do you need to be functional, or are you, are you repairing things, or do you want to get high? Yeah, fixing things. Okay, understood. I'm gonna go. Grab I some. need to make sure that the integrity of the. You know what? I'm just gonna. I'm I know just, this I'm is gonna off. go back to fixing ding, 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 things. Ding, ding. <laughs> now, <laughs> Amy said that she had this on the intercom, oh, like yes. yep. announcement system. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think that. Uh, Sophia got back to the mess hall with her burden of body, yep. has put him down, and is just sitting there going, what have I gotten myself into? Who the fuck is on my team? I have to rely on these weirdos? <laughs> just kind of sitting there going, oh shit. <laughs> Yep. I think Heather's gonna clue in. Like she's gonna just stop, like in the middle of what she's doing, and gonna turn, and go back, and be like, "Could anyone alive and mobile, please report to the what's the closest muster station? The 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 um. I mean, cafeteria. Yeah, we should do a head count, body count, body count, crew count. Um. Yeah. Anyway, and then this is gonna go back to like making sure that there are she like the things aren't like falling apart, and that this is not <coughs> that like now that we have life support up, that we have like I don't know, no flaws in the electrical system, and like etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I think yeah. so. After hearing that, Sophia is going to try and look around and see at any distance. Are there any life signs besides the five of us? 
Nope. Is there an intercom slash announcement link up here? Yeah. Yeah, there is. She's going to lift it up and go, well, life count is one, two, three, four, and five. Everyone else is dead, 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 and more dead. Who's, Who's the, the fifth one? Mass call. Who's the fifth one? <laughs> Are we just all using the announcement system for this? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it works. Um, what's his face? Oh yeah, that guy, he's legit. I'm Mateo. Seems like a nice kid. Tung, tung, tung. In one piece. Hey. Enter number one. Oh, I got a promotion. Excellent. Um, I have drugs. Please. Please. Take no. points over to Heather. Just, I'm going to touch you now. I'm going to take her pulse real quick. Okay. Ow. Uh, okay. How how hurt are you I on a scale? I think my mitochondria of... is on fire. I don't know. That's the powerhouse of the cell. Yeah, okay, I think they're short circuiting. That's If that's how bad it is, we might have to go all the way to ibuprofen. Um, so let's take a look at this. I was going to give you just some, some children's aspirin or some Tylenol, but uh, I think uh, in that case, uh, this needs to be... a child. The technocracy, the technocratic union works inside of a budget. Um, uh, how are you with needles? I'm going to stick something in her neck before she can answer. Ow. Okay, I'm going to roll for a prolonged mind three effect to just kill pain sensors uh so uh it is going to be but what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to mix a cocktail inside of here and it's going to be one part amphetamine uh just a nice little like 30 milligram dose of adderall uh mixed with um some some just stimulus killers and my goal is to do a conjunctional effect with mind two dull pain and entropy two um checklist so that so long as Heather focuses on what she's doing and gets like that super manic Adderall energy of double checking everything on a list, she cannot botch while the effect is on. Awesome. Well, she can still no, botch back. amazing. I'm going to spend a willpower amazing. on this. I want this. that in real <laughs> life, man. It's called Checklist. Right? It's like the best entropy wrote. Okay, That's so uh, I'm guessing my difficulty on this is going to be seven? Yep. Okay. And do any of my resonances help with this? Uh, da, da, da. Let's remind so, myself of the resonance. Yep, I'm going to pull mine up real quick. Uh, resonances, resonances. There we go. Uh, capricious fluid. Oh, does intrusive slash meddlesome work in this case? Yes. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Going for, going for six. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I should have said beforehand, I'm going for four successes. I got two with the willpower. Cool. Um, so may I continue next round at difficulty seven? You may as you may do so. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's going to be five successes. Nice. Excellent. So I'll put the extra into just duration. Cool. Uh, take a point of paradox. Yay! You're gonna feel real good, though. I don't have to explain mm -hmm. this to Amy. Amy knows. Yeah. <laughs> Amy's like my dream. <laughs> Yay! ADHD medication. I <laughs> think part of it is just like, oh, hey, that's my normal. Oh, that's not normal. <laughs> and then you're just gonna be like, oh, I can't feel my face. Oh, I can kind of feel my face. I don't eh. have to feel my face if I don't want to. <laughs> that's. That's true. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, Heather, what were you, pl uh, planning on doing? Um, well, Heather's initial thing was now that we have life support on is just because we went through the dimensional anomaly and it was an explosion. So what is the integrity of the actual ship? Like, 
like the submarine hull and all that stuff and like mm -hmm. are there any things like if i'm assuming there's kind of like a display or something of like and showing like wiring nonsense yep. of like and like running scans and like what needs to be fixed and where yeah i'm sure tegan's yep. probably after like snooping around that's what she's doing is like getting the like diagram of the ship up and doing like running diagnostics on stuff so we can figure out what the what the frick we're gonna do and then she's also gonna be like well, i guess we have to figure out how to move this thing as well do we not oh. have power to move it oh huh. do we do we have a communications system up and running like is that is that is that a thing that we can what radio like the pa Oh, like external communications. Oh. I forgot about that. Because if mm. we're across the dimensional barrier, there there should, in theory, be uh, other watching stations out here. Yeah, let let me take a look at that. Uh, hold on. And then Heather's going to start looking through and seeing if there's anything specifically related to that. Also, or, like, that we can, that she can, or at least uh, like us, like find it and then hand over to someone, one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Heather, I, while I was doing my what the fuck is this actually search somewhere in the center of the ship is an energy source unlisted, like, I have no idea what it's doing there, but it's there and there's no records of what it is that m might help us get moving okay, Heather's just like stops like cranking something with the wrench and it's just like what like, like a warp core? I maybe like that's the kind of thing that yeah one of those like that's my in first the Star thought? Trek. Huh. Yeah. Do so you know Scotty, where it is? it's in the center of the ship. Yeah, but where in the center of the ship? Because I think I need to. I think you Tegan can... at that point will try and bring up the the data that she found and try and like project it over the overlay of this this ship and kind of like get it to ping where it's it's coming from. Cool. Yeah. I've um crawled all over this ship and Yeah, give me um what was that? Intelligence and computers. Sure. Do 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 do. I'm gonna spend a willpower. Good call. What is my difficulty? Uh, let's do difficulty six, but let me know if you get any tens. Um, I got one ten. Okay. And then I got uh, so not including the ten, I got. Two more successes on top of that. I would have had three, but there's another fucking one. So three successes total, and one of them is a ten. One's a ten. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as you uh, kind of look for a way to project it, um, you come across um, uh, a set of blueprints that you can also project up if you'd like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you bring those up, and uh, it's there's a little light that's pinging and it looks like it's kind of in the belly of the ship. Um, and Heather, you haven't really gone down there because it's as far as you're, you were aware, according to the blueprints you have, it was not a room, but on these blueprints, it's a room. Hmm. You know where that is? That's not supposed to be there. Um, while you two kind of struggle with this, uh, <laughs> just thinking on it, um, over in the mess hall, Sophia and uh, with Mateo just kind of lying there, um, uh, you're just like, what, what, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> um, and you since um mateo like his breathing changes like he's about to wake up and um he just starts screaming 
And you guys can hear it down in the other. She's going to... Uh, she She's going to scramble and lunge for where she had him laid out in probably a bench seat of some sort. Yeah. She kind of maybe propped something, like a folded up chair in between it and the table to form kind of like a little nothing you could fall out of. Yeah. Type thing. And she's going to lunge for him and try and see, like, has he woken? Is he in, like, agonizing pain sort of scream? Is this something fucking with his mind sort of scream? It looks like, um... She probably he's... heard a lot of screaming at this point in her life, yeah. so she started to categorize it by, okay, is this spirit fuckery screaming? Is this mind fuckery screaming? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, this is, um... I'm going to say uh, re-experiencing trauma screaming. Um, so he has nightmare? a blank stare. Nightmare, PTSD flashback. type flashback. But he has a blank stare. He's not awake awake. But something is happening in his mind. <laughs> Shriek towards the open door rush over huh yeah, yeah, yeah. something oh, mental's God. happening you've got my you've got mind stuff right i am also mental let's do this as long as you're mental enough um okay he's screaming he needs to calm down um okay trauma trauma response drugs okay i'm gonna bring out the big guns on this i need you to stand back um, right. white or brown, white or brown, white, 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 obviously white. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like, I need you not to question my methods. D trust me, I'm a trained counselor. That's why I've got this. I'm going to give him the drama llama. Go for it, Doctor. It is, it's a therapy. It's also like, if he's, he's only holding it by the feet because the head is completely soaked in, um, in basically a skin to skin contact form of ecstasy. <laughs> he's going to pull like a little baggie off the top. That's amazing. Makes my background show up. What the hell? <laughs> Alright, uh, and is going to uh, pass over the llama. And I guess let's do some magic. Um, let's do some magic. Okay, uh, I am going to... Oh boy, what can I do with this? Um... I think Sophia's starting to think no wonder my therapy took so fucking long. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna spend a willpower. I'm gonna mine two, and we're gonna go for seven successes. Okay. Seven successes, mine two. Um, so that's gonna be difficulty of six. Uh, capri this is, makes it capricious, so five. Uh, and let's spend. No, you know what? My quintessence is too valuable. I've got three points, and they've got to last me the rest of the campaign. Chronicle. Okay, <laughs> so difficulty of what it was, five? Okay. Yeah. Mm, and uh, willpower, sure. Okay, so that's four successes out of seven. Cool, keep going. Okay. And that was difficulty of, then it goes up by one, difficulty of yeah. six, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's six successes. Okay. Four, wait, you I can got keep four going. Motion? Five successes. Yeah, you go. Okay, yeah. all right, I'll keep it going at difficulty seven. Yep. And those are two tens. Nice. Which turn into a seven, so that's going to be a total of eight successes. Fantastic. Um, and what is the uh, the full effect of what you're trying to do? So it is emotional calm. Basically, it is empathic protection calm. I am going to try to flatline his emotional core and keep it there. 
Uh, and if I can push it into the positive spectrum through the bottom, I will. Uh, but it's basically um, the the skin to skin contact with the um, with the MDMA is going to be uh, a a kind of a trans a transgressive barrier for the processing of me of of mental health issues and uh, PTSD responses, which is actually something in real life we've been working on using MDMA yeah. and other positive, like, like uh, psycho psychosyllabin to uh, help you process trauma by allowing you to walk through it without negative uh, mental response. Awesome. So basically, I'm just going to give them good dreams. I'm going to take some paradox. Yeah, yeah you are. Um, but only one point, because that's how this system works. Yeah, um, it's pretty gentle. A, a successful vulgar effect is only one point of paradox, unlike the old system. <laughs> Okay, um, so that's, uh, I guess I'll put three points into, I'll put four points into duration and four points into power. Cool, yeah, so he is out and for a while. Um, but yeah, it as as you kind of um, give Mateo the llama and the, uh, the, skin, to, or the skin to fleece uh, contact happens, um, it kind of breathing slows, heart rate starts to slow, um, and he just kind of grabs the llama and like curls into it and Ooh. then is out and has stopped screaming. <laughs> Never uh, underestimate do you think the that llama. Was just normal trauma response, like PTSD or something. Uh, Not infection, whatever that thing was. I can't tell until we get further into this. I could try to do some some psychotherapy later once he's calmed down, but at least this will keep him, if not sleeping, then at least calm. If if he starts to show any aggressive behavior at all, at all, or any strange behavior that isn't just him being a little high, um, please let me know because that means that yeah, it's something else. If his eyes go black, I'm spacing again. Okay, I mean that's that's fair. Um, Excellent. Uh, just, have you spaced anyone so far, Miss Smith? Not on this trip. This trip is the one I am the most curious about. No, everybody's already dead. And that wasn't caused by you. Well, you were in the room with me up until. I was unconscious for a decent amount of it. This is true, but Heather was the first one conscious who then woke me. So if you need verification, I believe she was the first one awake. I just so want to make sure that you didn't have a trauma response as well. We all have our demons. I don't generally go in for those sort of trauma responses, honestly. I'm more likely to, like, damage my own sleeping pattern. How are you sleeping If I really need to have a trauma response, I don't feel like that's the time for this right now. You're going to have to sleep eventually. And when you do, I've got you covered. I have a few things to help as well if needed. You sure? What is on that thing? <laughs> Lots. Um, but honestly, chamomile. That it's, shit actually works. Well, it's also got a liberal coating of uh, of CBD, CBG, and um, um, what was on the other one? Mostly MDMA, with the slight touch of. Um, uh, LSD. I'm not surprised you'll be out of it for a while. And psychosil psychosilivan, um, as well as some compounds that aren't really public knowledge, so expressing them wouldn't really help. Doesn't LSD? make you hallucinate yes but in a negative fashion sometimes that's what the mdma is for he couldn't have Are a bad sure thought you're not right a now. pharmacopoeist i believe in better living through science and chemistry why aren't you in the progenitors they wouldn't take me i don't have the bangs for it Lovely haircut, I mean, we can way. change that. Um, I, I don't think I have the face for it. My cheeks are too chubby. Um, 
we're all working together on this. And besides, you do a good job in your field. I'm sorry I couldn't have been more useful for your desk duty. I want you to know it was nothing personal and I was just trying to do my best by you. Uh, appreciated. I mean, the higher-ups always like to make us write a desk sometimes. Not so much in your case. They wanted you back in the field pretty quickly. But That's I've also... Well, sort of. I've also seen them work people to death figuratively and literally. And I prefer talented young agents not go through that. Fair. I do my best to keep my skin in one piece and continue living? This probably isn't the time for it, but um, Sophia, who did you lose? And with that, we're going to go over to uh, back to, to Heather and Tegan. <laughs> I'm not sure what Sophia's answer there is, but uh, we can come back to that. I have not explored that yet. Right. How many fucking llamas do you have there, Kelly? At least two. At least two. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Trauma llamas, I'm so happy. Trauma llamas um, are so great. This is the yeah. drama llama, this is the trauma llama. Or is it... Oh my god. Nice, nice. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, Heather and Tegan, uh, you are searching through some stuff. Yeah, um, well, I have an idea based on the blueprints of where this is supposed to be. So yep. I'm going to get my, okay, what? I'm just trying to remember like what gear that, that she actually has as like, just as like an engineer or what she can scrounge from like the engineering bay. And mm -hmm. it's like, if I need to cut through a metal wall, would that be a... What exactly would that be? Like oh, some sort of... yeah. I mean, it. you don't have enough, but it could be forces magic. Uh... Yeah, no. <laughs> but I feel like there's like probably an actual tool there that is. we would use. Because you have to cut through metal to re do repairs. Yeah, I can't so, remember like, what it's it be... called. But I, I know like, what you're talking like about. It's like a welding torch. It's like a welding like... torch type thing. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're so she's going to go and, and retrieve that from wherever it is and like get it. Because I think there's probably a portable one for, you know, doing these kinds of fixes yeah. and such and is going to pack that in and then start like getting ready to go adventuring through the depths of the ship into the walls cool um t you can give me one more um intelligence and uh computers or technology at this point um i'll do technology because I have one more dot in it. Um, <laughs> okay. I know the specialty doesn't apply, but um, it's true. So get um, one more die. Yeah, no, it's true. It doesn't apply. Go ahead. Uh, difficulty of, at this point, six. All right. Oh, nice. I actually rolled no one, so I don't have to sub subtract any of my successes. That's nice. Um, <laughs> that's going to be four successes fantastic um, as Heather is uh, kidding up to go fight with the walls of the, uh, the ship you're on <laughs> um, you are still looking through the systems and kind of figuring out what's important that you need to, to still work on um, versus what's not important um, versus, you know, what's weird and not supposed mm -hmm. to be here. Um, and you find a, um, a sequence of code that you're not entirely sure what it does. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't do anything harmful. It looks like it's just a, like, information screen maybe like like it could tell you maybe all the systems that um that are currently down like up on the screen that you're looking at mm -hmm. um if uh if you'd like to do anything with that uh yeah amy um i was thinking that um heather's probably pulling up like if she can find like a like a tablet or a data pad that's got yeah. that will reflect that information so that she can have the blueprints and like any parts of the ship that are broken, like at least get that information so she can wander around with it. 
yeah absolutely um but yeah so there's this this bit of code that you know it's not dangerous if you run it okay um she'll run it cool um the screen that you were looking at with the blueprints um goes like black for a minute and then some code runs up on the screen and then it looks like it's not necessarily rebooting but restart there's like a little little symbol and then it comes back to this kind of lovely blue blue type screen not like a blue screen but not blue screen yeah. of death but yeah. the the lovely uh high tech blue. blue yeah yeah yep. that comes up um and just in this like this old font that you probably haven't seen since like the 90s says welcome to the nautilus and it just like has a f flashing uh space at the end of that and i'm gonna call a game there <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! welcome to the nautilus Rama. Yes. <laughs> hey there. that was great jen <laughs> yeah <laughs> Next, Next time, oh. GG. 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 the center of the ship. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Make sure to Nautilus. take you know some notes about what yep. things you want to do because we're not back for a month. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true, right? Yes. I have yeah. a whole list of like things that Heather makes sure she has, including screwdrivers, wrenches, hammers. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, this um, is cool. that was great, Jen. That was, that was great. So good. good job, Jen. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad everybody had fun. Um, I've been very excited about this plot. So, uh, <laughs> um, I want to know what so the hell's going it's... on. But pardon me. <laughs> I want to know what the hell's going on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I I may have have told some people that I'm like this is the stuff I'd normally gush to Kelly about, but he's a player. <laughs> yeah, it's always really difficult for that. That's why you got to use who you can use when you got them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, so because it's the first session and because y'all bared with me while we did uh, solo scenes and stuff, I'm giving you 10 experience. I'm buying a seeking session. <laughs> yes, I know it's a lot. Um, for one, we don't have channel points for the chat to buy you things. And oh. for two, um, we uh, it's a short series and I want you guys to be able to do stuff. And like I said, you bared with me for the solo sessions. <laughs> So it's what it's current times seven <laughs> for um seeking yeah yeah it's current current one times away I'm one saying. away so seeking next up so here's a question 20. so we got yeah. ten from the survey that we did we got ten yeah. from yeah. the night and then yeah. we did we get five at the end or beginning of last game because I had one experience left on my character sheet when we started for some reason we had it at right. the beginning at character right. creation. Right. Yeah, I gave you I gave you that. So did, and I, I had get... also given you build XP, but that was a while yeah. back. So Okay. Yeah. Then did we get XP at the end of the zeroth session? Not the zeroth session, but the the uh, no, we didn't. I went and watched the end. We did not yeah. get any experience. Yeah, and I can't remember if I did say it in the chat that I was gonna give you some, but I was. Um Yes, so, was so recently in the chat, Jen said five XP. As if it was at the end of last game. Okay, so that yeah. means okay. I have 26 XP total. Oh, there you go. 25 XP. Which means... Yeah, so that's why I was he, able to spend yeah. 12 XP at the beginning of this to get more um, skills. So, right. so boom. Yeah. I paid for All a Seeking. That. Me too. Suck it. Now you got to deal with me. Yep. Um, <laughs> well, at least I knew you two wanted them, and so those are going to be fun. Yeah. Exciting. I have a very silly idea. Well, I guess it's not that silly. And that is, should I buy a second point of drive or a third point of drive? Because I don't think any of us know how to drive a submarine or a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it would be good to know how to drive. I don't that. have drive. I don't have drive. I was. Uh, I have one point of drive. And I'm like, if anyone else wants to be <laughs> the pilot, like the pilot, <laughs> please do. You could also take uh, microgravity operations. Mm -hmm. What is that under? Uh, it's a right end that allows you to basically do like cool flips and stuff in space. Yeah, space. check check the um, uh, 
which one is it is it it's book of secrets? got a ton of them uh, um yeah, so does book of secrets yeah they're they're all over the place like the new the, like the 20th edition stuff has has them everywhere yeah and Where if could... you like read one of the older books and um want and like there's a write-in skill that m20 didn't take for some reason um like just let me know and it's probably fine so subdimensions just take all the subdimensions so the gen has yeah, to rattle off every good. subdimension I feel like right. at some point in this game, um, when I get more XP, and I think probably I think I have to buy it off with contestants as well. I think um, I was looking at the old iteration X book, and I have to talk with you, Jen, about how that converts over. But they have actual like more body modifications for it X stuff. So I think at some point I'm going to get the experience and whatever I need to get. And yeah. then I'm going to have a combination of life uh progenitor and uh void engineer do some do some stuff with uh <laughs> with uh tegan to uh operate all right i'm sure some of the bigger stuff robin in march or under. april if you bug me enough i will i will go back and revise the iteration x revised patch <laughs> that i wrote like 10 years ago what like i'll yeah. revise it and i'll put it up on storyteller's vault Oh, I okay. could. I'll bug you. Because Sam could has been bugging me. I get technology five. That might Damn. be a good idea. That Tech might be five. Good. You just need to take I'm crap so you can blacksmith the parts you need, like Tony Stark. Well, I've got yeah, crap gadgets. Heather Anderson so, built this in the void. Um, with a box of scraps. That um, I know. I, I think I mentioned this before, but uh, we are using the uh, well. What is it? Well skilled craftsman. Uh, optional Ooh. rule where you can just buy specialties um so you can actually buy specialties for any of your skills but you don't get the benefit of tens rerolling until you're at four dots in that skill mm, but if you want okay. to be like i want to like this is her focus their focus um then you can buy the specialty um as like your focus uh it's i think it's three xp but i'll have to check the book cool okay but the only other way that M20 allows you to have multiple specialties is to buy up to four again, like multiple times. So I don't like that. <laughs> mm. It makes sense in some ways, but yeah. Anyways, I can give you the page number if you guys want to look at it yourself, but that that's out there. So like crafts gadgets, you could take a different specialty for like three XP and you could craft blacksmithing okay. if you want it that is nice. awesome yeah okay and at this point i'll say for this game um any kind of abilities or specialties that would require like a ton of work for you to do uh, we'll just say that you had been working on it in your life and now mm -hmm. you've gained the specialty um and then moving forward you might have to like put in time on the ship to to gain those things yeah, no, I think for a lot of my stuff, there is some write-in stuff, but I think that's more, not so much a specialty as a, my skill is in this area of it. Um, yeah, there's a couple of, of abilities that have, that you have to pick a specialty for, and so you kind of get it for free. And then mm -hmm. there's um, So like ones... Esoterica, I have Reality Deviance. Yeah, there's ones you have, down. To, you have to pick a, like an area... I think you have to pick an, like an area so of like science, species. chemistry, that yeah. sort of thing. Exactly. So and then I have a write in skill of jury rigging. Nice. That's good. But I have a lot of things at three, so I might buy some up, but I was thinking of buying my third point of stamina. Yes. Mm -hmm. Probably wise. If I can soak better. So congrats, <laughs> Jen. You're a real storyteller now. Yay! You always were, but now you so now much you have fun. A, you have the I'm glad you guys had a good time. Um, Kelly, I don't know what thank yous you, to do, so you... of course. So hello, Patreon. Uh, if you're watching this right now on Patreon Live or Patreon in the VOD, thank you so much for all of your support. This game is made possible by you. And if you're watching this later on YouTube after about three months, so I guess in May when this comes out, uh, you have Patreon to thank for this. So. Uh, I really got to do a deep bottom of my heart thank you to the patrons who make this possible because Dork Tales is a very expensive and time-consuming endeavor. Uh, and I am very, very lucky to have great friends like the players here and people like Jen who are willing to run games uh, for the Patreon for these exclusive advanced access games. Um, 
And that couldn't happen without you. In particular, it couldn't happen with some of the people that I promised that I would name every episode, which include my world building producer, Soul Omen, uh, my divine producer, Jan, my mom, um, who doesn't understand any of this, but is still very supportive. Uh, then uh, my de my demonic producer, Precarious, my uh, wizard of the Patreon, Tammy the Forever Cleric, and of course, the High Council of Patrons, uh, which are Taryn, the Traveler, Buddy, Trizelta, Amberthist, Cubby Gummy, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha Urquhart, Drew Thompson, Sergio, Chef Aladeth, Laruk, and Sorcerer Sanguine. You're all amazing. And the rest of you who are just watching on the VIPs or perhaps even on like the, the Dork Squad, you are all amazing as well. And thank you so much. And uh, finally, a big shout out to Ping, who allows us to broadcast to you in high def video, even though we are not in the same room. Thank you so much to Ping.gg. If you want to look as good as uh, as these people do, uh, then you should definitely go to Ping.gg. Check out their pretty reasonable plans for this type of stuff. It's, it's pretty comparable, depending on what you get with like, kind of zoom but it's better by like a lot so um thank you so much and go check out ping.gg today if you are a streamer or just looking to have some high def calls with uh none of those annoying waiting rooms it's pretty great that's what i got cool yeah well thank you to my players you have been amazing and uh Thank you to the folks watching this now or later. Um, you're also amazing. And uh, come back next month for episode two. Episode two. Bye, everybody. Bye. Here, take this. This will help you get through the month. <laughs> <laughs> the drama llama. Drama llama. The drama llama. Right. Drama llama. Good night, everybody. <laughs>